Hello, I'm Adrian McKeown, um, and yeah, who knows what's going to happen uh, in the next like three hours. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, basically, um, I thought I'd have a play around with some live coding. Um, the last few, I guess, a couple of months during lockdown, um, I've been experimenting. I mean, I've done yeah, I've been playing around with OpenStreetMap for uh, like over a decade. Um, and the last couple of months I've been looking at the kind of 15 minute city um, idea that uh, uh, Carlos Morenos, if I got his name wrong, but um, <clears throat> over in Paris, they've been thinking like, oh, it wouldn't it be good if every all of your everyday needs, so not everything that you might want, but like, you know, going to the shops to get kind of groceries and going to work and the park and things like that. Um, what if all of that was within 15 minutes of where you live um, and by 15 minutes they mean 15 minutes walking or maybe 15 minutes cycling um, and that just seems kind of a nice interesting idea around sort of active travel and and kind of a different way different sort of lens to look at cities under um, I mean not just cities but I live in Liverpool um, a city here in in the northwest of the, the UK or northwest of England um, in the UK, uh, and um, <clears throat> so I've been, yeah, like just chipping away at spinning up a, um, a website that takes a load of OpenStreetMap data and then just, you know, draws some 15 minute um, isochrones to show you where you can get to within 15 minutes of various points around the city. Just to kind of start having conversations around it, just kind of explore what it's like. Um, you know, maybe the city's already a 15 minute city and we just need to start looking at it that way. Maybe there's some things we can do. Um, the city is putting a load more bike lanes in um, as a response to the uh, COVID 19 uh, pandemic, which is really cool. Um, I do a lot of cycling uh, around the city. Um, I mean, you know, I don't have a car these days, so. Walking and cycling is how I get about, um, and the trains if I want to go further afield, um, which I have not done since before lockdown. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a crazy time, isn't it? Um, but anyway, I've been <clears throat> basically sitting here in my flat, um, working on this sort of stuff for a while. Um, and I've also been watching people on YouTube and Twitch and things and kind of thought, well, given that I'm doing this stuff anyway, maybe I should just start live coding, just kind of, you know, have have whoever was interested come along for the ride. Um, and <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so here we are. <laughs> like, we'll see if it works, we'll see if it doesn't. Um, I have no idea, because I haven't quite got things set up right at the moment, if anybody is actually watching. Um, uh, because, yeah, because I haven't got that window visible. Um, so yeah, very early days in my live coding stuff. Um, <clears throat> and um what else like yeah that's probably about it i guess uh, this is the other thing i'm kind of interested in in sort of more collaborative live coding um so the kind of background and stuff you can see at the minute isn't just my webcam it's actually a screen grab of a uh, big blue button which is some awesome open source uh, video conferencing software uh, this one's supplied by meet.coop, um, who I joined uh, recently to, to get access to it, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> and they, yeah, so I'm like, there's basically, this is also, as well as being live streamed on, um, uh, on YouTube, this is being, there's a kind of live video thing going, which is probably going to make my computer just run ridiculously slow and might, might, yeah, make it impossible to develop, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, basically I thought I'd have that session running and then if anybody wants to actually join in with the live coding, so it's kind of like a live streamed, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like hackathon or something, like not the hackathon's great kind of um, option for stuff, but yeah, like it's an option, great term for things anyway. Um, yeah, like if other people wanted to join in and, and do stuff, then then we could chat on the big blue button instance, um, and then I can switch and they'll be yeah you know, they'll be able to be seen on the live stream, and then they can always share their screen 
on Big Blue Button, and then it'll show through on the live stream and you know, stuff like that. And we'll, yeah. You know, and mostly, what's going to happen is it's going to be me just doing what I would normally do, but talking to myself um, uh, and making my computer really slow. I expect, but uh, we'll see. Um, my mate Ross has said he might kind of pop in, so so we'll see if he turns up um, and and take it from there. So I guess it might be useful um, to to show what the actual what I'm talking about um, what, yeah, where am I so far um, so let me flip to desktop view oh, and that worked as well, it's awesome you're going to get to see lots of kind of behind the scenes uh, OBS studio screen grabs because I haven't worked out all my nice hotkeys to keep all that hidden so you're going to get to see behind the curtain uh, a little bit as well and it's all going to be messy and janky because this is the first time I've done any of this um, so um, yeah, actually, what I should do is work out whether whether I've got my stuff lining up properly with my nice screen grab. And I need to keep OBS Studio at the top so that I can actually see what happens when I click on this window and whether it is all like I think yeah, it's a bit too far wide because I've got my chat so yeah the thing on the top on the right hand side is um, is the, the YouTube chat video so if the chat chat window even so if you're um, if you're watching then then stick something in the live chat um, and and say hello um, and I appear not to be signed into chat but that's gonna be great so um, yeah let me let me just Flip back to standby for a second, so you don't get to see me type my password in, um, and I'll be back with you momentarily. Aha! Excellent. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear me at the moment, Ross. You probably can. I'm probably streaming on standby, which is like still, still doing the audio. Um, but now I have signed in. The chat is actually sort of working. Uh, there we go. So let me just move over there. Okay, I'm back, and now I don't have this window. Oh, because it's changed name or something? Why? Why has that window disappeared? This is the chat window. Right, so it knows that it exists. I can go to the properties of it, and I can pick the right window, which presumably has changed name because I've reloaded it. Oh, it's because I. Are you joking me? Oh. Yeah, so what it's done is it's broken me out of the iframe. That is rubbish. <laughs> like, yeah, it's totally broken me out of the iframe. Oh no, there we go. Right, that is working. Excellent. But I can't say anything back. Okay, I'm just going to talk to you. I can't type things in the chat window. Going to work that out for the next time. <laughs> but there we go. Ah. <clears throat> um. Don't want to change, save those changes, and uh, get that out of the way. Okay, so there we go. Right, let's get rid of OBS Studio and back to a web browser. So if we go to 15minutecity.mcqn.com, uh, this is the website where I've been um, like developing everything. Um, and so you can kind of see as it loads um, <clears throat> we've got a map of Liverpool let me zoom out for a little bit um, and you can kind of probably see roughly where we are um, so there's the kind of the, the River Mersey um, and if I zoom out a bit further well, I suppose I'm going to have to zoom out quite a way before you're going to see the, the UK as a recognisable thing. Um, but, you know, let's do that for completeness. 
and you know I need to fill it. I've got loads. I've got three hours to fill now. Hopefully, I'm going to do some actual work at some point. Um, maybe I just need to always imagine that Ross is watching or somebody's watching that I'm going to talk to because that's going to make yeah it's going to make it a lot easier if I imagine there's somebody listening to the rambling that I'm going on about. Um, uh, so anyway, so yes, let's zoom in on Liverpool. Um, and then you can see there are a bunch of kind of weird blobs um, over certain bits. So the city centre is kind of down here where it says Liverpool, um, understandably. There are then a whole range of um, kind of districts. I've, you know, I mean, what districts do you use is a conversation I've been having with people. Um, and it mostly as I've kind of trying to find all the different centre points because um, it's a nice way to just have a conversation um which is mostly actually something i think i picked up from uh, from ross who's who's watching at the minute um because he does he's an artist and and he does art but artworks that kind of encourage engagement and conversations with people and so you use the art as a as a kind of not as a props not the right word for it but you know it's like it's a device that's a better word um it's a device to encourage conversations and to start conversations on certain topics and so this like the different districts is one of those um, devices I'm using in this which which works quite nicely so you know I'll post something on Twitter and then be like I need to find the center point of like you know there's a load of gaps here which isn't because there aren't any districts there that need it's that like if I scroll down on this side you see there's a whole bunch of um, districts of Liverpool that I don't have any data for because I haven't defined what the center points are yet um, and that's because I'm like I live in the city center kind of near Prince's what Prince's Park Ward um, and um, yeah I don't feel like one I don't know all of the city well enough to go like yeah this is the center point of Edge Hill like I know where Edge Hill is but like, where's the center of it I don't know that's a kind of woolly concept um, and also you know what are all the different areas like you know, they're sort of, it's all a bit more kind of folk knowledge um, in that you know and you have conversations about like different bits of town um, and different people call them different, th slightly different things and different people have slightly different ideas of where they are and obviously kind of politicians have like very, or the kind of administrative parts of the city and the council have like very defined you know, wards um, and so when I've spoken to some of the local politicians about these things, then they're like, well, do you want wards? And I remember having yeah chat with, with one of them and, and they were like, well, you probably and I, I didn't think I wanted wards because I'm like, wards would give me a nice, simple, like, you know, it's already worked out. Somebody's worked out where all of the areas are and I could just go, what's the center point of that geographic area? Um, I could get the computer to work that out for me and I could, um, I could use those, but like that's where some council person or you know some official has come along and, and drawn lines and kind of gone yes this is part of such and such and that bit this the other side of the pavement is a different a different ward and so you know and people don't think like that i suppose it's much more like Flickr did a thing where they could kind of define where different bits of london were if i remember rightly back in like the late 2000s uh, based on like tags and stuff from the photos which was just a kind of bottom up sort of like well people took photos and called these different bits of london different things and so we can kind of map them and go ah like this is really very definitely a certain part and then it gets kind of fuzzy and it starts to bleed into like the next area over and then and then now you're definitely in the next area over sort of thing um and and you know this uh, the cities are the same because they're all just full of people um so so yeah that's that's kind of that's where I'm getting these and I, I, I needed a list of them to kind of start with and Liverpool Architectural Society like 10 years ago that sort of time frame they did a pro project that split the city into 32 different districts um, or neighborhoods um, to kind of think about things in this I guess in a similar sort of way or at least to look at things in a, kind of a neighborhood level rather than a, a whole city um, and and so yeah like I remember that they'd done that so I just went and found uh, 
found my blog post about it, which seemed to be the best record on the internet of them having done this project, which is, yeah, always do good websites and leave them up and don't change the URLs and don't kill off. Anyway, um, that's a whole separate three hour rant. Um, uh, but yeah, got the list of, um, uh, of districts or neighborhoods from them as a starting point and they, we might I might lose some of them eventually and all of this like basically this just boils down to a JSON file that gets thrown into some code that generates all this stuff so changing where the center point is or adding center point is pretty easy to do uh, I mean that's that's you can see that sort of happened up at the top end of the um, of the city here with kind of like Bootle was in the original um, list of 32 that was on the, the out there basically they were kind of concentric rings um, kind of sort of spreading out from the center um, and Bootle was, was the kind of furthest north that things got um, but uh, because one of the people I've been chatting to about it uh, Duncan lives up in uh, like Crosby or Waterloo or somewhere um, he was like oh can can we have like further north uh, and I was like, yeah, that's fine. You just need to tell me what the areas are and, and where the middle of them is. <laughs> um, uh, and so we've got, uh, yeah, these ones further up, which I think is uh, basically this, yeah, the website. The, the website is a work in progress. Um, and I really need to get to a point where the map just fills the whole the whole of the viewport. And then, and then you can scroll this sidebar up and down or the sidebar's tabbed or anyway, we'll come to that a bit later. Um, and so yeah, so that's why there's some that go a bit further up, um, and then I will, I might well like get rid of Clubmore. You can see that Clubmore, the data is missing, um, and that's because I had a kind of, I I've always joked that like Clubmore doesn't exist, um, uh, which <clears throat> which it obviously does, but um, like this bit of Liverpool that I'm zooming in on now. Um, is a bit that I know really well from, from or that at least that I'm really familiar with I suppose I don't know it very well but I know, I've been through it lots because growing up um, in Rainford which is kind of just off um, 15 miles um, outside of the city centre like a little village um, on the edge of Merseyside um, <clears throat> the way that we would come into town if we were coming to Liverpool is we would come down, um, where have I got? Yeah, down these lines for a bit, but then we'd come along um, Muirhead Avenue, which is this, yeah, this route along here. Uh, and through Tubrook, I suppose through the, along the kind of border almost of, um, of Norris Green and West Derby. Um, actually that might, oh yeah, Muirhead Avenue is that one. There we go, That's that makes more sense. Um, so yeah, come down the East Lanks and then kind of come across come along here and along um, Muirhead Avenue and through so like the yeah, Muirhead Avenue is kind of the the border between West Derby over here and Norris Green, which I mean Norris Green like this is also still Norris Green up here, um, uh, but the shops and things for Norris Green Norris Green Broadway is kind of around here, which is why that's the centre point for the Norris Green um, ice grounds. Um, and and yeah, we'd come down with Muir Avenue through Tubrook, and and then that like West Derby Road and stuff, which would then bring you into into the city centre. Um, and and like Clubmore kind of fits in in the kind of yeah, it's sort of in between Norris Green. I suppose yeah, as you can see on the open street map here, Clubmore is listed as like this bit here but there's no really obvious like center for Clubmore like it feels to me like I'd never heard of it like or I'd sort of yeah you maybe hear mention of it but like it never seemed to have a defined area um so and and I was chatting to the one of the former councillors for Clubmore um and and he he was sort of like yeah club, the centre of Clubmore is probably kind of Broadway the same as Norris Green and it's like well is that not the same place then <laughs> like, like I mean it's definitely gonna be the same place as far as me drawing little um, ice cones where you can get to because they're very much based on a centre point and if the centre points are the same then the ice cones will be the same um, so so yeah we might 
we might lose Clubmore, or maybe somebody else will come along and go, no, 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 Clubmore, Clubmore's this, like this is the centre of Clubmore, because um, that's the nice thing. I get to have conversations with, um, you know, various other people in the city to find out who live in different bits of the city and to find out what where they think of um, as as the centre. Um, and so, yeah, uh, Jim Noakes told me about Norris Green and I think Chew Brook, um, which I had kind of thoughts about, given that, yeah, we drive down this fairly main like, sort of dual carriageway um, through and all the shops and stuff are along there. So it's like, well, that's probably the centre of Chew Brook, but I could, you know, maybe it's off. I could because I, you know, these days I, I've, cycled, I've cycled through bits more of it um, of late, but. But very much like all of my growing up, we just drive down this road. <laughs> like, so I got to see that road lots, and that was too broke to me. Um, but it didn't extend like either side of that that road because um, that was all I ever um, kind of explored um, or saw as we were driving through. Uh, so it's good to get confirmation from Jim about that. And then yeah, like bumped into Andrew Beatty when I was cycling up through Waltham one day and had a chat with him and. Uh, uh, Terry Segura Terry like, there's this thing I know where his Twitter handles rather than their actual names um, and, and they yeah, had a bit of conversation about where you yeah, know where, where's the centre of Walton and it's like well okay so we've got a centre at the moment um, then like there's bits like Kirkdale it's like I don't know I cycle through Kirkdale quite a lot um, since lockdown because I've been mostly heading north um, on my or north and and east in my um, bike rides I do kind of you know probably do 17 miles later on today kind of up through Bootle and down and round and through Walton and Norris Green and West Derby and and Dovecot and stuff and, and then back round to the city centre um, but um, yeah like Kirkdale I kind of know a bit now but I don't know it well in like maybe it's where the station is but there's not a lot else by the station and there are certain, there are a few bits where there are more shops and stuff and so maybe that's the center maybe the center's a bit further down this way like i don't know i need to have a like i need to find a local basically and just be like where do you think the center of um of of kirkdale is uh, and then i can put kirkdale into it um i asked the scott e press which is the kind of something like the uk's longest running community newspaper or something it's been going since 60s maybe even long earlier don't know like but that covers Everton and, and Vauxhall and stuff and so I had a chat with uh, with Joel about where the center of Vauxhall is and so this one this one is Vauxhall and this one is Everton and then you've got Anfield over here um, and and it's kind of interesting that you start to see the so these um, I should probably talk about what all these weird blobs are shouldn't I rather than um, just I mean maybe you can read it from over here but <clears throat> These are isochrones, which basically there's um, so all of the data being shown here is from OpenStreetMap, um, and then there's another kind of um, ancillary project, which makes it sound, I suppose, compared to the size of OpenStreetMap, it's quite small, but it's still a big undertaking. Um, there's a project called Open Trip Planner, which a whole a bunch of cities around the world use for their um, kind of route planning apps um, and you know spinning one of them up for Liverpool is kind of an interesting thing that I, I'm you know wondering about at some point maybe doing um, but but what it does is it will do route planning so you can give it two points on a um, on a map and ask it to plot the route between them and you know work out how long it's going to take you to walk or cycle or get the bus or drive uh, you know um, and the, the nice thing about open trip planner is it will do multimodal trips uh, which is part of the reason why I wanted to have a play around with it as well as as well as for doing these isochrone stuff that I'll get to in a second um, and the um, yeah the multimodal stuff is that um, if you've used City Mapper at all in the UK, like I use it when I'm down in London, um, there, there isn't they don't cover Liverpool, um, but you can kind of use it and say like, I want to get to so, you know like I'm wherever I am and I want to get to this other place, and then it'll give you the different options like well if you want to walk it's going to take this long, 
if you want to go by car, it's going to take this long, and you know, and, and, it, and it can plot the route for you for both of those things. Um, and also, it's like, well, you can walk for a bit and get a tube for a little bit, and then get the bus for this section, and then you'll get there. Um, and it's that kind of the multimodal bit is just switching modes of transport. So it's like walk for a bit, get a tube for a bit, or you know, and we haven't got a tube in Liverpool, we've got an underground uh, in some bits of it, but mostly, so there's a reasonably good kind of train network. Um, but yeah, it could be like, you know, get the train for this bit, then get the bus for that bit, then walk this last section. And that's the multimodal in the kind of switching um, different sorts of transport. Um, and one of the other things that Open Trip Planner can do is it can then just generate loads of routes, I guess. I don't know exactly how the algorithm works. I haven't needed to. Um, it's just some software. It's a big black box that I, you know, I could go and poke around in if I wanted to. The source code is all there. Uh, but but I, I don't need to, so I don't. Um, especially because it's a math monolithic Java app. There was one point when I was trying to build it and, um, and gave up because, yeah, like it was just complicated and I'm not familiar with um, Java development, so um, I got fed up with the amount of Googling and poking around I was needing to do. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, one of the other things it can do is it can basically just go and find loads of, of um, routes and sort of work out, so you can give it different problems to solve, I suppose. So rather than saying, I want to get from here to here, like what route do I need to take? Um, you can also say, I am, I am at this point, where can I get to in 10 minutes or where can I get to in 15 minutes and I, I want to walk or I want to walk and bike or I want to bike and I can throw the bike on the train as well but uh, so for this um, these all of these kind of lines are the kind of where you can get to in 15 minutes walking um, from uh, from a certain you know, from the center point of each neighborhood um, and so the red circles are, um, let me see, I can't actually, my screen isn't big enough to, or my browser isn't big enough for, for, for some of this, but, uh, yeah, basically there's the walking one. So the city center one is centered on St. George's Hall, if I remember rightly. Uh, and so I can toggle things on and off. So there you go. The, that's the walking um isochrone for the city center so from st george's hall like this is how far you can get in 15 minutes walking um and and then there is also um actually if i click on this one that's going to turn all of them off for city center and turn all of them back on and now we can get a blue one which is actually hidden under this because the stylings you know as i say this is very much a work in progress uh so there's a cycling uh tick box there's another column of tick boxes for cycling um, as well, which isn't turned on by default, because as you can see from the city center, you can cycle quite a long way. And so if you have all of the cycling ones turned on, there's just like the massive overlap of, and just blue everywhere. So it doesn't really tell you anything very useful, like in the aggregate, um, it's useful for looking at for a single one, like we are at the moment for the city center. So it's like, this is where you can get to in 15 minutes on a bike in the city centre, so you can get down the docks. You can see, obviously, it's like there's the centre point, so it's the the river makes it a bit skewed towards like you can get further east than you can west. Uh, if I drag that up a bit, that might look a little bit better. Um, although interestingly, um, although you can't do it at peak hours, and I haven't ever done it yet, uh, you can at times cycle through the tunnel um, under the Mersey or the Queensway tunnel. You can't go under the King, you can't go through the Kingsway tunnel. So you can see that the Kingsway Tunnel, there isn't anything um, over on the on the Wirral side, but there is a little tiny kind of um, beachhead <laughs> of of where you can get to cycling uh, in 15 minutes from um, from the city centre, because uh, you could go through the tunnel. Um, I mean, I guess the other thing to do would be to add, um, like if if you yeah, you could add. So, uh, getting the bus or which wouldn't work for a bike uh, but also getting the train and there are, yeah, there's a railway tunnel underneath the river as well and a bunch of stations and then that would open up more of the Wirral because you could get further in 15 minutes um, but but this is yeah just looking at where you can get under your own steam rather than using any public transport at the minute um, and then the green so let me just turn 
all those up to get rid of the cycling one again for a minute. So the the green isochrone is also looking at you know if we want the city to be a city for everybody, there are you know whole groups of people who have push chairs or in wheelchairs or the getting older or whatever you know for whatever reason they use a um, you know walking frame or something like that um, and they can't get as far so um, we've also th shown the uh, like reduced mobility um, stuff so this uh, is passing in there's a I think it's accessible equals yes or something option into the trip planner um, I don't know exactly what that does for working out the routes and I guess it will also be dependent on what the Data, underlying data in OpenStreetMap is like um, and how good the um, that data is but but it's at least making a start and we can always make the data better because it's OpenStreetMap and anybody can go and contribute and improve the uh, the data that's being used um, uh, but yeah it's it's kind of doing a okay this is this is how far somebody who's in a wheelchair um, or or who like is maybe a bit older and can't can't move around as quickly um, can get so you can set yeah there's an accessibility option for the route planning which presumably does something I'm not sure exactly what I guess it would avoid steps and things like that uh, I presume um, and also there's a kind of walking speed um, and so this is a slightly reduced walking speed uh, as well so so the green ones give you um, that yeah reduced mobility area um, so. So yeah, and there's a whole, whole chunks of the city that I haven't worked out where the centre points are for yet, um, but, but that's that's the basic website um, and what I'm kind of playing around with, um, and then um, let me show you. I'm just going to look at some source code. So all of the code is on GitHub, um, and like a few years ago just like out of curiosity as much as in, and partly as a place to kind of store things um, I thought it would be interesting to see if we had like a Liverpool organization on github um, and and so just created one because you know anybody can create an organization um, so this is totally unofficial although what's official I mean yeah the council aren't involved in this at all they've seen it they've seen bits of it um, but this is very much there's a whole you know a whole bunch of locals who are kind of poking around in this although it is predominantly me <laughs> like it's a sort of a yeah github place where i do things that are kind of related to sort of civic tech i suppose um there's a couple of interesting things just as a kind of diversion uh somebody should repository so this is a uh, um this is stolen from does liverpool which is a Kind of maker space uh, and and kind of community that I'm that I I'm part of and, and co-founded. Um, so we've stolen the somebody should from the somebody should that does Liverpool has, although does Liverpool stole it from one of our members, um, Francis Irving, who started to uh, basically built the design pattern, which is um, so it's it's a code repository. So um, it's where you know like GitHub is where software people store source code for things which is what i'm going to show you in a minute for that um you know the source code for for this website and so how this website is built um and it's a place to keep it safe and to look at different versions of things and to do all of the kind of organizing the work around building a bit of software whether it's a website or an app or some firmware for an arduino or you know all sorts of things uh and so mostly you have an area where you can put some code and so this has two files in it it has a readme.md and a civic.json um, and as you can see it's been going for six years now um, and um, and and there isn't so normally there'd be a whole load more code we'll see in a minute when I get to the 15 minute city uh, repository that there'll be a load more code um, and stuff in in like this view and this doesn't have very much code and it mostly has a readme.md which mostly gets which, which GitHub automatically pulls out and and displays in the kind of home page, so it lets you do a bit of a um, explanation of what this repository is about, and usually you get um, like uh, 
instructions on how to build the software so that you can make your own version of it um, and maybe some information about how to use it and things like that if it's an application that you need to run and give it different parameters and things like that it'll tell you like these are where you get different parameters etc etc and so yeah we've mostly just got a readme that says like you know there isn't any source code here uh, and that's because one of the other things you get with a uh, repository in GitHub or GitLab or uh, lots of these sorts of things. There are lots of different issue trackers. Um, is an issue tracker because if you're, you know, if you've used software, you'll know it will have bugs, uh, and it may also, you know, there'll be new features you might want to add and things like that. And so one of the ways that you can manage that is to have an issue list, which lets you, you know, create a new issue where you can say, like, when I tried to click on the button over here, it just crashed. Um, or the whole screen went pink or like whatever problem there is with the software, you can create an issue, describe what happened, and then somebody like one of the developers can come along and say, okay, well, right, well, we've, we've worked out what the problem is, and you know, we've, changed, we've made some changes to the code, and now we've fixed it, can, and then you can test it and see that it works, and all that kind of stuff for managing uh, how your, any bugs and feature requests and things like that. Um, and so does Liverpool, like, well, Francis started off having one for his house, which had things like, you know, the uh, want to get new double glazing or something for one of the rooms or the, um, the lock in the spare room is a bit kind of broken and might lock you in accidentally. Uh, stuff like that. So that you could keep a track of all the, all those little odd jobs that needed doing around the house. Uh, and then you could put comments in that said things like you know I've got in touch with the plumber who's going to come next Thursday and give me a quote uh, and then he could put another comment sort of you know a week or so later kind of going the plumber came and he's told me it's going to be such and such an amount and this needs doing and that needs doing and I should not use the shower in the meantime or whatever um, and then you know the plumber would arrive and then he could be like yeah this is done the plumber sorts it all now and could close it off um, just to kind of keep track of what was being done and, and organized stuff and so does Liverpool, we do the same sort of thing to keep the space running. So the community does most of the work in, um, or almost all of the work in running the space. And so when things go wrong, we raise an issue so that we can keep track of what we need to buy and it lets other people dive in and, and work on things. So it kind of spreads the loads. It's not just one person going, oh, I need to fix the laser cut. So what do I need to do? I need to go off and find like, some new mirrors and order them and then make sure that I track them down when they turn up and then I need to fit them and then I, you know it lets one person kind of raise the issue of sort of like the mirrors need replacing and then another person can go and work out what mirror exactly what mirrors need to be bought and then somebody else can who's got permission to buy things can go and buy the mirrors and then when they turn up they can tell every you know put a comment on saying the mirrors have turned up and then somebody else can be like, oh great, and they can come in and fit the mirrors, and then they can close the issue saying the mirrors are fitted and everything's great. Uh, and it's also a place where you can kind of keep that knowledge so the next time the mirrors need replacing, you can go and find the old issue and find out where you got the mirrors from uh, and what size you wanted and things like that. Um, so it's yeah, it's kind of ends up, the closed issues be a, a, become a repository of information and knowledge uh, within the community as well. So I did, long story short, I suppose, or, yeah, long story just continuing to be long. Uh, um, I spun up the same thing because we had that design pattern is kind of well established in the Liverpool community. So it was like, well, we should just do that for the city as well. So there is a somebody should, if there's something that you think should be changed with Liverpool, then you can go and create a new issue and explain what it is you think needs to be done um, and create it. And then who knows what will happen? Maybe somebody else will be able to come along and fix it. Um, there have been like, there's not, there aren't very many closed issues in this. So we can see, the issues that have been closed um, and some of those are kind of um, procedural stuff so Alex had gone and uh, you know worked out what labels we should use for things um, I think and um, we did go and fix the railings in set or, or we put some stickers on to mark the railings I think that was maybe got some nice uh, stuff. Is there a photo? There isn't quite. Oh, there is a photo. There's a link to a Twitter page which should show a photo. 
So this was, there were some low railings, which in the dark in the winter, it's hard to see that the railings are across the path and it's, you could cycle into them. Um, and so I'd kind of found them and, um, and from like, you can see these ones. So that, that's like, that's a normal railing height kind of there is the gate. So the gate's quite high. Um, but then at the side, there's a bit where you can, you know, you can cycle through it. Um, but you need to notice that there are some low level, like low down, dark blue against a kind of, and in the dark in the winter, it's like, it's quite hard to see those. So, um, I, you know, I raised the issue, uh, Martin went and stuck some reflective tape on it. So it reflect your, um, bike light. Um, so you could see that there was, um, damage but it has been removed since which is really annoying it'd be nice to and somebody's put loads of like ref super reflective tape on the big obvious gate but not on these bits um like it's very you know another example of how everything is very car centric um so yeah we should probably maybe i should reopen it and we should go and, and fix it again but um but that did get fixed um so yeah it's it's still a problem we can well it's become a problem again so we could reopen it but um uh, and then yeah things like this the that was coming there's a little mini round or a little junction that sh probably should be a mini roundabout um and like somebody actually in the council went and had a look um and it turned out it was going to be super expensive so it's like okay yeah i don't think we care enough about that junction to want to spend like uh it was tens of or 100 grand or something it was like you know stupid amount of money for the kind of inconvenience it causes so um so we figured we could close that one so like like that's that's just yeah okay fair enough we've gone and looked at it and actually yeah it doesn't you know somebody else could come reopen it and argue that no it's really important and we should spend the money but um yeah all of us involved it so far had mostly said yeah that seems fair enough it's like it's really expensive to fix that bit of the, of the road so let's let's leave it as it is it's good and it's okay uh and a lot of the open issues are like whenever i come across interesting things to go and play around with um Kind of software wise or see other projects that other people are doing then then i can kind of create new issues so it's not just me creating the issues but I, I do create quite a lot of them um about different um actually we should we should close to have a restart party once a month but at the moment the repair cafes are in pandemic lockdown um but that one it has kind of happened so there's a you know a range of different things some of them are just like install some bits of software and play around with some things um some of them are um more like you know art bus stops and stuff would be kind of cool um so the, there's a mixture of stuff that's kind of working on bits of software finding bits of open data um doing more actual interventions interventions in the city um or having like yeah events and stuff around um different uh yeah to get people gather people together and stuff like that um and so so yeah so a, a little while ago i like there we go 10th of may this so this was some of my lockdown reading um actually i think mostly was read whilst i was at the laser cutter in does liverpool laser cutting visors uh for the nhs um to kind of try to keep people safe in the pandemic because um, we did a big project to use our maker facilities to to help out with the um, with the crisis, um, and whilst I was running the laser cutter, you've got a lot of time of just kind of watching a laser cutter head move around, cutting things and making sure it doesn't catch fire. Uh, so you can do some reading of stuff, and I was reading um, as when we open this Dan Hill's uh, slow down papers, and so that's where I found out about this fifteen minute city thing, which. Uh, yeah, it seems to be becoming more um, more prominent um, as more people are finding out about it, um, and and so I just created an issue saying like, oh, well, maybe we should do this, and you know, this is the um, Liverpool Architectural Society uh, kind of map that they had done um, that I was talking about earlier. Um, oh, actually, Seaforth goes okay. So Seaforth is on the map. Bootle isn't the, the furthest north. There is another another ring around the edge um, that. But yeah, these are the different kind of areas that they'd listed. Um, I, I think theirs is a bit more um, kind of graphic design -y and sort of just, you know, like they're in mostly the right places. But um, 
I guess yeah there's no the Norwich Green one's a bit further out because but the centre of the Norwich Green is definitely the kind of um, Broadway so yeah like, anyway um, so so then I started yeah like and basically I just as I chipped away at it um, I was putting comments on this issue of what I was doing and getting around with and so I spent some time getting open trip planner up and running which actually was in a different issue already I knew about it so I'd gone and found this sort of stuff and this is the default view of um, of open trip planner where you can give it a certain point and it will draw a kind of contour line I suppose isochrones so each of these is like 15 minutes bike ride from the so this is where it does Liverpool is um, and yeah you've got um, 15 minutes walk and a half an hour's walk will get you to this edge and three quarters an hour walk will get you into the Mersey uh, but but also you know a bit further on and, and so on um, and and then this is one looking at Anfield and zoomed out a bit so you can see like you know where you can get to in an hour or more um, of walking um, but then if you go by bike you can obviously get a lot further in 15 minutes um, and actually this shows the multimodal stuff which is quite nice so it's zoomed out even further um, so that's you know 15 minutes on the bike and half an hour but you can actually get on one of the first so manfield yeah, I don't know which day which yeah, well you'd probably cycle to Lime Street and then and then get on the Wirral line to get through uh, the tunnel and over onto here so you can just in half an hour just kind of get into Birkenhead but in three quarters an hour you can kind of get further out and then also get into a, you know, much more of, of the Wirral um, I think at that point you start to see um, that that basically my data like there are these weird bits at the edge uh, and I, th I think that's an artifact of the fact that I haven't downloaded the entire OpenStreetMap data set um, I've just downloaded the data set for Merseyside um, and and so I think these bits will be places where um, you're then into West Lancashire um, or Greater Manchester and Cheshire down this way so so there would be like if you if you put more if you gave more OpenStreetMap data to um, to Open Trip Planner, obviously it would do a better job of drawing those ice cones further out. But because I've been mostly focused on kind of Liverpool and never mind even through into sort of St Helens and and, uh, and places like that, uh, then I've only got the the data for for kind of the Merseyside area. Um, and and so then yeah, I was kind of playing around with all these sorts of things and and then like a yeah kind of a couple of weeks later I'd play around it again and by this point it was like okay this is getting to be a thing rather than just a, a little thing to play around with so I will um, spin up its own repository and make its own thing um, and so I've been working out how we could uh, yeah how we can make a better website how I can build you know um, this website um, and and show like lots of different points um, because obviously this you can pick any point you want and generate these these nice kind of maps but you can only do one point at a time and I wanted to do multiple points at once so I did spend a bit of time trying to build Open Trip Planner from because um, this is a website that's inside Open Trip Planner um, so you can just download a, a big Java jar file and run it on a computer and then point a web browser at it. Uh, well, you need to download a bit of uh, you know, some some data for it to use, but it's actually quite easy to do. Just going and getting some data from OpenStreetMap. There are places where you can just download a subset of the data, so you could get like you can get the whole world, you can get all of Europe, you can get all of the UK, you can get all of England, you can get all of the Northwest, you can get specific counties and things like that. The the they're all kind of broken up quite easily, so you can just go and download the bit you want. Stick it on your on your computer somewhere. Download the jar file, which is a Java archive sort of thing, um, like a Java application basically. Um, and and you need Java installed, but yeah, run that, and it gives you this web browser interface, and then you can go and, and look at it and and explore some stuff. Um, and 
and that's quite nice. So yeah, spent a bit of time trying to build it because I was like, well, maybe I just need to change the web browser that's inside Open Trip Planner. Uh, but that yeah proved difficult, and and it's all in Java, which I don't. You know, I, I mean, I can kind of cobble stuff together in it because um, it's close enough to C++ that I know really well. But um, yeah, I'm not not super familiar with Java, so. Um, after a bit of playing around on the yeah on the twenty fifth, um, oh actually yeah, so I spent yeah I guess I was playing around with it mostly each weekend. So like on the tenth, I got all I got Open Trip Planner, Open Trip Planner spun up, and 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 that kind of initial like oh look I can make these nice maps isn't this cool? Uh, and then the weekend after I was trying to build I spent the you know, I don't know if it was the entire weekend or definitely a chunk of the weekend just getting to a point where I could build Open Trip Planner from source uh, rather than just downloading the jar um, and and it was just painful and it didn't work properly and like yeah I didn't get to the bottom of, of what I was because I was like okay I've spent, spent a day or so <laughs> like fighting with this and not really getting anywhere um, and then I actually found a um, yeah, different website. This one linked over here, um, oh, which isn't. Oh yeah, which shows you, and you can see this looks a bit more like the 15 minute city one that I've done, uh, because one of the things you can do is you can use Open Trip Planner to generate a GeoJSON file as it is, but basically generate that kind of isochrone outline for you, um, and then you can use some other software to load it in to do um, some other stuff, and so. You know, this was using Jekyll, uh, which is something that I um, it's, it's written in Ruby, which is is something I'm super familiar with, and it's what I use for uh, my mcqn.com website. It's a static site generator, so you run some stuff, it churns through all your files, builds a whole load of HTML and images and CSS and things, JavaScript and things like that that you'd have on a website, and then you just stick it on a web server and it just runs, and you don't it you know, doesn't do anything live. Um, so it's quite a nice, um, nice way of doing things to build websites if they don't need to be super interactive or super interactive in certain ways. Um, and so, so I was like, okay, that's interesting. So basically, when I discovered this, um, that gave me a kind of a good way forwards to decide what to do with um, uh, with with the fifteen minute city uh, website, and so. In order to do that, I spun up a new repository in the Liverpool UK. So all of this stuff is open source. Um, uh, I have a security vulnerability that's just come in this morning to go and fix. Um, uh, but as you can see, there's a whole load more files here than there were in the last repository we looked at. Um, and, and this is basically all of the source code that builds um, this website. And so um, there are a whole bunch of yeah different things. I mean, there's a readme to MD which then gets shown here, which gives me you know as I've written a little bit of mostly just copy and pasted stuff from that um, original issue. Um, and made up you know, a couple of notes about how we do some stuff. So if you wanted to join in and build any of this sort of stuff, then basically um, you could. Yeah, download or clone as the term goes, which actually yeah is yeah clone it. So you could, if you've got a GitHub account, you could close it and clone it. Actually, you probably don't even need a GitHub account to get it in the first place. You'd need that to be able to send any changes, submit any changes to me and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you could just get the code source code yourself, and you could build your own version of the website and. Yeah, you know, that's probably more useful if you're going to do one for for your city, um, or for somewhere else, or if you want to work on some of the stuff that that I'm doing and chip away at things, that would be great. Um, and, um, and and basically, yeah, you'd need you'd need Ruby and Jekyll installed. Uh, yeah, there might we probably need a a set of install instructions at some point um, as to how you'd go and build this. So I guess the first time somebody. Um, tries to work out to build it, then then they'll probably go and well, I would hope <laughs> they could go and they could open a new issue saying like how do I build this thing? <laughs> um, 
and then I could go and add some more documentation that would say, like, oh, you need to go and do this and this and this, and then um, and then you'll have all, yeah, then it'll work, and and then we can close that issue. Um, and so this has got then a list of issues for the things that I'm uh, playing around with, um, and there are you know almost as many closes as there are open, which is nice to show that I'm actually doing things. Um, the actually yeah, let's, let's just jump back to the code for a second. So there's a bunch of different things. There's um, index not markdown is is the main kind of web page. Let me see if we can see that. And yeah, the, this you can kind of see that this um, this looks quite similar to all the stuff in the sidebar here, um, and and it's got some slightly weird kind of things that don't look quite right. Um, and this is basically um, like these are sort of little code instructions, um, and and it loops around um, as a, some da a data set to basically put an like this area dot name is the way it kind of works out um, how to put like this is the area name city center or Egbeth or Anfield or Google. So this all gets built up programmatically when the code gets run through Jekyll um, and then actually if we look at it in this isn't great because this is github trying to make it look nice because it knows that it's markdown but uh, it doesn't know anything about all of these like you know curly brace percent things um, so if I go and find hopefully this text is going to be um, this easy enough to read um, it's a bit bigger than it normally is. Um, so this is looking at stuff on my, but this is the same. This is my local copy of it on my computer. Um, and so I've got index.markdown and I can open that. Um, and you can see that actually it's not really markdown. It's mostly HTML, <laughs> uh, but you can do HTML in markdown. So that's not too much of a problem. Uh, and then yeah, when we get down here, this is a makes a bit more sort. Well, maybe is a bit easier to read um, because you then got this bit where it says for area in site dot data dot areas. So that's going to loop through, um, and like that's going to loop. Where's the end of that four? The end of that four is going to be down here. Oh, yeah, which is down there. So that's like that's a, a loop that runs through so basically it will generate one of these the TR is a table row um, so it will generate a table row for each area in the um, in the data set uh, and then for each one it goes in it and TD uh, is a table cell I don't know why it's a D rather than a C is it, oh, is it table data I think rather than table header or will be something like that it's too long since I read the HTML spec um, but this is generating the little toggle things and putting the like the area dot name bit gets replaced with area dot net yeah, with the name of the area and then um, there are some other things like actually mostly it's just area dot name isn't it but I've got um, area dot name dash walk so that I can reference the walking checkbox and area name dot bicycle to reference the bicycle or the cycling isochrone checkbox and then this on change stuff calls this uh, JavaScript function called update isochrone visibility that goes through and works out which checkboxes are ticked and not and draws the right um, isochrones on the map so that you can toggle things on and off and things like that um, and and so the all of that data dot area stuff actually is all coming from uh, let's see yeah, underscore data areas dot JSON uh, open it um, you can see that basically ah yes it's got a whole load of whole load of stuff that I was playing around with so let me uh, let me just move that out of the way so this was me um, the other day I played around with things I was just curious as to where you could get to with within 15 minutes of uh, sorry 10 minute walk from any of the bike hire locations there are in, in Liverpool 
um, and obviously I had a way to generate isochrones so I just quickly went and hacked the site to build me a local version rather than to the, the live 50 minute city still did the proper thing but I have a local version that instead of showing me all the 32 or however many it is now um, isochrone areas um, it would do the all of the city bike um, bike car locations and then draw a 10 minute isochrone around each of those bike car stations so you could see um, actually yeah, let me go and show you what I'm talking about I tweeted a link to a picture of it um, so, or actually thinking about it what I could do the CD sandbox not get a, yeah, get a 15 minute city um, and then to build actually let me just go and see where that is because I think that's probably not quite as visible as it should be um, so let me just go and find that and drag this and make it even smaller right so now you should be able to see the whole of that terminal window on the stream uh, so uh, so yeah the way that this this is the as I say this is the source code there's a whole bunch of different files and and, um, and things to, to build stuff um, and a couple of I think if I do get status get status will show me how things have changed from the version that's in github um, so that I can work out I mean, it's a bit more complicated than that but for um, yeah simplicity it's showing me what's different so you can see there's a few files here uh, bike locations bike stations isochrone does of all uh, the jq uh out there that are, you know aren't in the source control system at all um there are things that i've been kind of playing around with as a sort of like whilst i've been developing stuff but don't need to be kind of stored properly they're more sort of experimental uh, and then you can see that i've changed a few different um uh, pages uh, to do different things and I'll probably, yeah we can go and have a look at them in a moment but this is yeah this is the source code for the for website and the way that you build all this stuff if I remember rightly <laughs> um, so this is all so you need a um, there's a packet a program called bundler uh, which is a Ruby thing that keeps track of what versions of all of the different Ruby gems which are kind of little libraries of code that do additional things so Jekyll is a gem um, and uh, I don't know what other things that I'm gonna yeah can't think of anything off the top of my head now that's another gem but anyway the, the whole bunch of uh, Ruby libraries and Bundler will help you keep track of, of the ones for a particular project uh, you end up with a, a gem file and gem file dot lock that bundle uses to, to list actually yeah if I look at what's in gem file we'll see that yeah there's the Jekyll gem and it needs to be version 4.1 or thereabouts um, we're not actually using a load of these ones the Jekyll feed plugin I can't remember what that does maybe that generates other feeds so that does some time zone stuff if we're running on Windows um, so yeah, there's not very much in the jack. There aren't very many gems that are being used by this particular website. Um, and so bundle exec will let me run jack run a command, but within the kind of environment with all these gems. Anyway, um, so if I do the Jekyll Jekyll build, will build the website, uh, which basically takes a whole load of stuff and it builds it into underscore site. So this is like the output of um, of all of this source code and this is the website that gets kind of shown uh, so this is it going off and building things um, and at the moment it's going through lots of areas but actually the areas are all bike stations um, <clears throat> and when it's done that um, I'm actually going to run it again probably <laughs> so that's 
that's kind of built all the source code, so all the code, all the, yeah, all the HTML and CSS and JavaScript and images and what have you um, for the website. And then I would copy it over to the um, to the live production site to, to get it up and running on 15minutecity.mcqn.com. Um, there is an open issue for doing all of that automatically and in a better way so that we could so it would get kind of built properly from source from a kind of clean source rather than being copied from my computer which is very uh, janky and and like unprofessional I suppose um, but like yeah this is an experimental kind of exploring stuff and yeah as I say there's an open issue for for doing it properly at some point where I'll get github action to go and build it and deploy it um, but for now just doing a cop just building some stuff here and then copying it to the live site kind of works um, but you can also do Jekyll serve which again will go off and do the building um, uh, but then this time when it gets to the end of doing the building what it will do instead of just going yeah it's fine there's a load of files now in underscore site uh, it will then spin up a little tiny web server that runs on my computer so it's not available you know you can't connect to it from the outside world um, or not easily there'll be ways of doing it but anyway yeah like basically you can't but other people who are you know on my wi-fi in my flat would be able to connect to it actually could they hmm can't remember whether it opens it up for that or not anyway none of this matters because all this is for is so that yeah as you can see here but you know at least I've filled the time until it's finished building it uh, <laughs> that now there's this server address of 127.0.0.1.4000 um, and if I go there um, then this looks very similar to the um, 15 minute city website apart from the complete lack of um, map tiles for some reason <laughs> uh, why are there no map tiles that's rather annoying yeah very strange there are no map tiles oh there we go I'm super zoomed out maybe or I was by the time I'd done things let me Yeah, I think maybe it's just that, uh, yeah it is, I think it's possibly just that my computer is super slow um, because I'm into, uh, <laughs> like, like I'm streaming my webcam up to Big Blue Box and I'm also um, streaming, uh, yeah, to, like, to YouTube. Um, so, but yeah, there's a lot more isochrones being shown now and let me just go and double check um, what the difference is so if I look at the diff so the the nice thing about using git for all your source code and stuff is that when you've changed things from the last version that you committed uh, you can see what you've changed so I can see like I know that I've done some stuff just to kind of quickly hack together this other view um, and part of the reason that I could do that and not worry about it too much is because I know that Git will let me see what's changed and get rid of all those changes, um, so that I uh, don't, yeah, don't need to worry about it. Um, and so I can see what the difference is for the plugins generate ice. So one, it gives me a list of, you know, which files have changed out of all of the files that it knows about. Uh, so these three files are different from the version that's that's checked in. Uh, and then I can yeah go and look at the diff for that particular one and so we can see that what I've done is added a new URL for each of the transport ones and yeah the cutoff seconds is 600 rather than 900 so these are now 10 minute isochrones not 15 minute isochrones um, so yeah it's probably not useful to look at well, actually, I suppose it, it does, yeah. So this shows you, the green ones show you how far or where uh, people can be in a... Um, uh, let me just drag this up a bit so it's a bit more 
the right bit is visible. Um, so yeah, the green stuff is uh, where people with reduced mobility are within a 10 minute walk of one of the bike hire uh, sites. Uh, but if I click on that top bit and then we wait for it to go, there we go. That's cleared out the reduced mobility ones just to make it a bit simpler to see what's going on. Um, and and I guess well, people in wheelchairs will find it difficult, mostly, I would imagine, to, to use one of the higher bikes because they're not really set up for people with um, reduced, um, well, yeah, with... with uh, you use wheelchairs. Um, nice if we did have something that did, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, these are all the bike hire locations, and as you can see, I mean, kind of understandably, the city centre is pretty, um, pretty well covered with with bike hire uh, stops. So you're, you're you're probably within ten minutes walk of quite a few um, bike hire places in the city, in and around the city centre. Um, but then, like, super interestingly. It's like it's the south of the city that's that's covered. After that, <coughs> excuse me, um, rather than yeah, like further north. Um, I mean, like yeah, because there was Norris Green and Boot and stuff, so you know, further north still. So yeah, it's kind of super interesting exactly who gets to have a bike car uh, system and it, and who doesn't in the city or like I don't know how not sure exactly why that is um, apart from the fact that the south of the sea is the more kind of affluent um, and, and kind of middle class part of the city than compared to the bits of the, the north and further east um, but anyway yes so that's um, so that was me messing around to build to build that um, so let me go and then I don't I don't need those changes to that one so I can do a Git checkout minus minus of plugins general isochrones and that will undo the changes and you'll see over here it's automatically like Jekyll's worked out that one of the files has changed um, which is quite nice for doing the you know while you're doing development of stuff because um, it will you know you make a change to some code and save it and then it goes ah that file on disk has changed I need to rebuild the website so that we can see what the latest changes look like. Uh, and so it's going off and rebuilding stuff. Um, and what are the files were different? Um, I don't know what changes in index.markdown. Um, ah, that was the uh, Robin Lovelace stuff where I yeah, missed off the fact that he is Dr. Robin Lovelace. So. Um, let me just commit that and add because I do want that change. I want to keep that change, so I can do a commit, which is going to put it into the latest version of source, you know, the one that's tracked under source control, and make that the kind of official latest version. Um, and I want to comment on this. There isn't an issue if it's reporting to it's related to. So I'll just do, um, you know, add correct. Um, What's the term? What's the, the, the name? Like, uh, prefix isn't quite the right word, but it will do for this commit comment um, for uh, Dr. Robin Lovelace. Um, so now, if we do a git log, we can see that yeah, there is that commit that I've just done. Um, so this is a list of all of the things that I've done. That I can just make notes as I go as to what stuffs. Um, kind of what stuff's happened and what's yeah what's gone on so I can see and then I could go back to previous versions if I wanted to so I can kind of wind back and go backwards and forwards in, in time I suppose effectively during the development um. <coughs> right what um, what else is done git status right so this <clears throat> this file has changed a lot. The under data areas. Um, um, it helps if I remember to put the word diff in, and you'll see that basically, like all the stuff that was in there has gone, and there's loads of new things because <clears throat> I got rid of all the old neighbourhoods and replaced them with all the bike stations. 
Now I don't want this for the um, for the proper data, like for the for proper website. So I need to kind of revert this, but rather than or just before I revert it, because I might want to do stuff with the bike locations. And I, yeah, there is a bike locations .json there, which might have some of this info, but um, but actually I'm just gonna copy um, and make a copy of this before I before I undo those changes. Um, <clears throat> uh, city bike stations. Um, and I don't know if you got to hear that I'm the only person in this conference, which I don't know if that means that somebody else was in the conference and I didn't notice. Oh, uh, Ross is in the conference, trying to be in the conference. I think it looks like Ross might be trying to be in the conference. Um, anyway, let's go back and see what happens when he probably just needs to get through the um, audio check and things. Uh, so anyway, this is uh, uh, is it Jason? Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, that's often it's not in the scroll window. <coughs> right. Um, let me go see data. Oh yeah, areas.json two city bike stations.json. <clears throat> so that's rebuilding a whole load of stuff. Um, let me just see if this. No, that's not John. That's not Ross trying to get in. Uh, <clears throat> and so I've made a copy of those. So if I ever need the city bike stations in the future, I've got them lying around. I don't think I'm going to check that in just yet because I don't know what I'm going to do. With it again. It's not important the rest of the site doesn't use it. Um, it's just going to be built as a sort of set of data that we could we could access in some of the templates that we use while we're building the website. But the other thing that I can do is I can um, revert the um, data areas.json and if I do a git status now then and you can see the um, files over here there's a load it's skipping because it doesn't know where they are um, <clears throat> and it, the, the file hasn't changed uh, and if I go and reload the local website version you see that the list of um, isochrones is very different and we're back to the <clears throat> um, the proper kind of live version of the website um, and it's got rid of all of my changes. Uh, so, <clears throat> as I was saying, I suppose I'm going to have a quick look at the uh, data areas.json. And so you see, this is uh, JSON is the JavaScript object notation, if I remember rightly, but it's a you know, format for storing data and things. Um, and basically, this is just a list of like each each line is one area um, on the map. And we have like each one has a few different things. So there's a name field, which is you know city center, like the bit that will show up over here as the as the area name. Um, and then <clears throat> there's a latitude and longitude, which gives you the uh, coordinates of the center point of a particular um, uh, neighborhood uh, on the city. So. So you can go and find, and basically there's a bunch of them, you know, like this one, broad green, uh, where it's lat and long is, is zero, um, which, you know, is just off the, um, just off the west coast of, of Africa, if I remember rightly. Uh, so if you ever see anything that's kind of dumped you there, then that's probably just that the developers got some zeros in their, their code, which are then being turned into like, points where it thinks that something is happening when it's not really because like in this case um, I have special code as you can see where it says skipping Null Island because um, uh, it knows that all of the things that I'm looking for <clears throat> there's no way that the latitude or longitude is going to be zero because Liverpool is nowhere near um, the equator or the um, Greenwich Meridian. I, mean, I suppose it's reasonably close to the Greenwich Meridian, but uh, but luckily it's far enough away that uh, I don't have to worry about that. 
um, and I can just go, oh look, it's zeros. So I suppose if somebody, yeah, if somebody wanted to make one for London, uh, then then you'd probably have to, uh, yeah, you might need to change that code and make sure that it it skips when both of the things are zero. I can't remember what the code does now. But anyway, uh, that skips over generating the isochrones, but otherwise we'll go and generate isochrones for each of the things in here. So if we want to, um, <clears throat> if we want to add a new um, area to the map, because um, we're going, you know, say we're going a bit further out, then we can just, you know, create a new line in it and somewhere else, uh, and then we can go and put the, the latitude and uh, longitude in. And then it will generate, um, and there'll be a somewhere else on the map when it gets regenerated. Um, but we do not want to do that at the moment, so let's drop back out of that. Uh, so, yeah, we didn't get Ross in the end. It looks like we almost got Ross, but then we didn't. Hmm, oh, right, so apparently we've lost. Ah! So I've been chatting away all this time whilst um, whilst my live stream has been messed up. <laughs> the joys of doing this for the first time. I wonder if that does it, if that hotkey is a global hotkey then. Because I can do that. Yeah. So I bet that's when I was in here and I did control A. Is that taking you back? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Right. <clears throat> Let's let's go back to the desktop, uh, and let me actually let's go to the selfie one because uh, you don't need to see me poking around in. Um, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, Ross, you're in the chat, but you're not in the big blue button. You're in the big blue button for a bit, weren't you? Uh, but you didn't. Yeah, you didn't join. You didn't seem to join properly. You seemed to be momentarily in the big blue button, or you were listed at some point, but um, but you didn't appear. Uh, on the video call. Um, uh, anyway, let me just <clears throat> go and change these uh, keyboard shortcuts, um, which is good that I don't have to flip to um, OBS Studio to change scene, um, but I don't want it to do that just uh, <laughs> like magically when I'm not realizing it. Uh, can I change the settings? whilst I'm streaming. Uh, hotkeys, let's see. So, yeah, that one's probably okay. Um, <clears throat> so, what am I gonna do? Yeah, let's change these to be Control, Shift, and the thing that I thought. And then we'll probably find there's some different magic key press that I'm yeah, let's. Uh, okay. Right. Hopefully now I won't accidentally switch um, <laughs> switch scene in OBS Studio uh, when without like yeah I suppose I won't accidentally do that won't do that when I'm not meaning to. Um, so let's see if. This works. Uh, it does. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to work out some better. Like, ooh, that's very much not what I wanted to be showing. How's that doing stuff? Um, okay. Right. <clears throat> well, I seem to be doing all sorts of great things with them. Um, let me switch back to that whilst I. Um, actually, no, I can't. Okay, let me go. <clears throat> let me go and work out. Try and work out this screen. Yeah. So why this should be just screen capture? Why is that not just capturing the screen? Why is that capturing the chat? Oh, is it? Ah, the chat is full size. The screen is hidden behind it. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So.
So that's a bit better. And then let's not stretch it so much. Okay, right. <clears throat> who knows what I'm? <laughs> yeah, who knows what I'm doing? Not me, as is very apparent. Okay, right. Let's hopefully not switch to a different screen, uh, different scene in OBS. Um, and what else do I want to do? Yeah. So we're only like an hour and a half, like halfway through, and I'm finally at a point when um, if I can find my right window. Uh, then I might actually do some coding <laughs> rather than just rambling about stuff. Uh, so let's go back here um, and go and look at what issues there are. Um, I'm not going to worry about the security vulnerability just this second. I could go in and fix that, but actually that's, <clears throat> as we've seen, um, it's... Um, so does this mean that Ross is Okay, you only get in the huh? Hmm. So Ross kinda comes in and then disappears. I don't know why he can't get into the live stream. Um Yeah, like you should be So if you want to try it again, Ross, and I'll see if I can see if there's something where I get to see, like maybe I have to let you in or something. What settings are there for this? I don't really care about those things. Audio, oh, audio lets for user join, that would be a useful one to have, wouldn't it? Um, don't really want pop up alerts for that. <coughs> but maybe I'll get to see, or I'll get to hear when somebody tries to join the. Um, Big blue button room, which would be good. Um, and that was presumably the noise for me joining. Like Ross seems to be in the. Yeah, it's weird, Ross. You seem to be in the. Um, in the chat, and I don't know why. Like when I used I used this yesterday, and ah, that sounds like some audio from somebody. You, hello. Hello. You might need to. Well, <clears throat> depends if you want to, but you might need to share your video if you want to appear on screen. <clears throat> and actually, let me switch. Switch scene. Which also is yeah. I'm totally gonna have to get some better. Um, uh, what you call them? shortcuts? Because <clears throat> whatever shortcuts I decide to use, I seem to have managed to override with some other shortcuts. So. Yeah, if you manage, if you work out to do the video stuff, Ross, then then we'll get to see you, or a part of you, by the looks of it. <clears throat> or maybe we won't get to see, like, are you on? Yeah, I think you're. Ah, you're just obscured by a <laughs> chat box. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think if you if you move to your like right very slightly on your webcam, you'll you'll appear. But uh, I mean, you're yeah, you, know, you are just about there. You go. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're now on the stream. I well, let me see if there's a way of. Can I move you around? No, I can't. Um, I need to do a bit more. Getting, getting my actually, what I could do is in OBS Studio. Can I? Hmm. Oh, that's just going to squash us instead, though, isn't it? Which is probably not good. Um, I was just going to say. Yeah. Right, interesting. So how did you get in in the end then? No, I got it. I'm in. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Ah, good point. But if you're watching the live stream, then... Oh, okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's an interesting. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, okay. That's a good... Yeah, good point. I suppose, well, hopefully now I'll get notifications when somebody joins. Because part of the problem is that I've got the um, big blue buttons just in a window in the background. And OBS Studio is capturing that and streaming it out. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but I don't get to see it. And so I didn't get any... Like, because there was no audible, I only got a notification when when you left, because it would go like, "You're the only person in the room." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, well, there was somebody else in the room a moment ago, and I didn't see them." Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, um, but it's yeah, it's kind of so. At least I've worked out how to turn that um, audio notification on. So hopefully, I'll notice if anybody else joins the the system. And I guess long. Like I'm, you know, as you've <clears throat> as you've seen, this is all just very um, experimental and off the cuff. Um, so if I was running, I, I don't know if I can tell who's watching. Um, I suppose no, I can't is the simple answer at the moment. Um, I can see I can see the chat window. Um, because I, the, the chat window is actually, OBS Studio is capturing the chat window to put it onto the stream, um, because that's all stuff that I, um, let me go back here, find a web browser and pull up my pinboard, uh, bookmarks, because <clears throat> basically I read this awesome, um, Sue's Hinton she, she's a live coder who does kind of some JavaScript Arduino y stuff. Um, and she wrote a really good Medium post about how she's got everything set up. So I've been like, I, d I haven't got everything set up as well as she has. <laughs> but the reason the reason that I've got things set up in any kind of a, um, <laughs> a way that, that's, that's not terrible um, is because uh, I read her Medium post. Which yeah, this is all just, I suppose, streaming twice, like, is just yeah. slowing my computer down quite a bit. <laughs> um, but she's written this um, yeah awesome guide that talks about what you know what kit she's got, but then also how she's got different scenes set up um, and things like that. Um, and so I've been just copying a lot of her ideas. Um, to get stuff set up to, so that like that coming soon screen is my standby one with just like I grabbed a couple of um, images that I had knocking around and I'm like oh look you can do an image slideshow in OBS studio really easily so I'll do that and then I can just drop some photos in or whatever some images into a folder and then because <clears throat> she's got some text that scrolls um, so that if you're watching the live stream you can work out that the live stream hasn't frozen because stuff changes because obviously if it's just a single image then you're not going to tell like it could be like yeah your stream's frozen and and you only realize that like half an hour into and you'd miss like a load of me rambling about god knows what um but but then she has some like little widgets and stuff she, she's done it like slightly differently to how i've done it but she has got like her screen and then she's got an area where it has the the live chat um, and an area where it has just the webcam stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, so I've been kind of copying that mostly. Um, I, I pulled. It's, it's okay. Yeah, uh, but the, the, and there are still some rough edges because, like, I can yeah I can see the live coding chat, but at the moment. Like so, that was I went and found something on YouTube that said like, oh, you look, you can just do a embed a um, a chat thing, and I'm like, great, that's perfect. That'll let me just embed the chat so it can be on the side, and and I can see it, and I don't have to have the like um, YouTube Studio stuff. Oh, actually, I've just realised. Am I? I'm on totally on the wrong scene for this, aren't I? Not that you, I suppose, you can't see my screen anyway, <laughs> can you, Ross? Because, um, <laughs> but don't don't feel bad because nobody on the live stream has been able to see my screen either. <laughs> um, 
because uh, because I didn't switch scene in OBS Studio, and I'm on the selfie scene, which is basically you and I and the chat box. Um, so, so I've been pointing at bits on a web page uh, that nobody apart from me has been able to see. But uh, uh, yeah, basically she has um, she's got stuff up, set up similarly, um, and you can tell. I suppose one of the things that would be useful to know is to know how many people are watching the live stream. I think that would be useful to know. I mean, maybe it wouldn't, because it would also be a bit distracting. Because, like, at the like at the moment, I've just, you know, rambled on. I haven't actually read all of your chat stuff because it would get in the way of like because I was just in full flow. And I'm like, well, if I read that, then I'm gonna have to stop, and then I'm gonna and like. So I'm still working those sorts of things out, and also, so I think it, in some ways, it would be good to know if there were people watching, but I think it would also interrupt what I'm talking about because it would be like, oh, hello, oh, you've gone, oh, right, well, the, and so there'd just be a load of like me, like basically live narrating my viewer levels, or just you know stay at zero all the time, and, it, and I, that wouldn't be a problem. Um, Yeah, <clears throat> basically. It's obviously, it's obviously we don't do live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing that um, Sue's talks about. Like she has some moderators on her chat and stuff. So she's got some friends or you know, people to help out with moderating things, um, which is you know like uh, I suppose you know it's a, annoying that she needs moderators that people might come in and, and start trolling or what have you, um, but but also means that you've got somebody else kind of behind the scenes watching things and and who would maybe the be a, maybe she's got an extra kind of back channel so that they could alert her to say like actually there's a chat comment that's like super interesting you should go and. And check it out um, and things like that yeah and I've been wondering longer term like you know he says getting far too far ahead of himself having done one live stream um, <laughs> not particularly well <laughs> and yeah it's still not, I, I don't know what you mean I've, I've reverted a couple of changes in git like <laughs> I've opened vim a couple of times like <laughs> Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't moved the project forwards at all, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> well, that's mostly what I'm trying to do when I start doing some coding. Uh, but uh, yeah, kind of I I think you'd maybe have somebody, I guess. Well, I suppose I, I don't know. I quite like this idea of uh, sort of I, maybe we need the right term for it, but the kind of more collaborative. Um, live coding sort of session or just getting to a point where there's a team of people working on some stuff um, and I guess at that point yeah I don't know how well it would don't know how well it would work I suppose because I get really distracted when I'm like, if I'm in the office and somebody else is kind of narrating their work because I keep thinking that they're talking to me and like sort of you know kind of getting distracted and I can't focus on whatever I'm trying to do um, and obviously with live coding you kind of have to narrate or somebody has to be narrating the work unless it's going to be really boring like maybe it's maybe it's some new super slow TV sort of thing where like you dial into a stream and mostly it's just silence <laughs> of, of, and there's a faint tapping of a keyboard and every now and then there's some conversation because it's just like yeah no this is basically just a live feed of an office <laughs> um, uh Mm -hmm. Well, that's good that you were kind of having to pair around with some stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I mean, and that's, I suppose, yeah, more the sorts of thing. 
um, I think that I'd, I'd want to do within the um, yeah within like these sorts of so I, I guess like in in the kind of the way that I would envisage it maybe working and all oh, this is up for grabs and for, for exploration and stuff isn't it but it would be that like you'd be like we'd we'd start off and I mean I yeah if I do more live go maybe when I do more because I'm probably going to try another like I'll definitely try a couple more sessions of it if nothing else um like the yeah at the start there, there won't be an hour of me explaining what the project is um it felt like I kind of needed to do that just as a sort of first off not that that's really going to help because nobody who's going to tune in in the future is going to have watched the previous live stream to me but I guess at least now it's there I can go oh if you want to get all the background go and watch the first stream which is terrible but it's me rambling for an hour about what this is um, and so the idea would be a bit more like it was just a group of whoever's going to work on it getting together and going okay um, what are you going to work on what am I going to work on like and maybe there are things that people can work on together or maybe it's like somebody else would say like oh i'm gonna go look at issue blah and so there'd be a, like a a collaborative thing which maybe i guess would be in the kind of view with um that we've got at the moment with like with all of the people as a video participation uh, but maybe i i'd share my screen on big blue button so that you could see it and then and then it would be like, okay, here's the issue list. What do you want to go and work on? What what should like? I mean, maybe we could try that now. Like, this is going to work really weirdly. Let me see if I can. Oh, ah, yeah, you're not a presenter. Um. So I can share mine, I think. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, I, I could make you a presenter, which would let you share your screen, I think. Why is that not work? Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, so I put my computer's running really slow. So I started to share my screen and then thought it hadn't worked <laughs> and then stopped sharing my screen um why why have i got so many screens that don't have names <laughs> um, uh, what's that one is that a screen hmm. yeah this could be the bit where it all falls over in a heap <laughs> I, I don't think it's your camera that's causing the problem um uh, let me see. So, which screen do I want to share? Why is, have I not got a? Uh, let me just. Uh, I've sod it. Let me just share the entire screen. It's going to be easier. <laughs> um, entire screen. Online meeting cooperative. Yeah, that's a slide deck, which I suppose I can probably change that slide deck. And what we should change that slide deck to something more interesting, more useful. Um, yeah, that's because at the moment I've still got a window up that says like, do you want to allow to just share your entire screen? And I thought I'd clicked allow quite a few times and I've just done it again. And now maybe, there we go. We've got some nice, you can see how fast my computer is as to how slowly it did that um, that kind of amazing picture in picture kind of dropping down sort of a thing. So let me do that. Um, I feel like I'm on kind of top of the pops in the late 70s at the moment. Um, uh, so yeah, I think what um, how I'd imagine maybe doing it is that we'd start off and we'd kind of go okay what um like here are the issues 
which issue are we going to work on in today's um, today's session? Um, and and then I guess well, and then I suppose it's working out whether there are things to do collaboratively or things to do. Um, like individually and then check back in and I suppose yeah like it's and maybe it wouldn't always be yeah, it wouldn't just be about the 15 minute city thing it could just be like basically a code for Liverpool um, like hack day yeah um, and so it could be that like you'd be like oh I'm gonna go and look at this other issue that um, is about something a bit different or something and then and then I'd yeah pick one of one of these issues to go and, and kind of mess around with and and, and work on um, and talk about what I was doing but at certain points like I mean you know you I guess you'd be free to tune in or out of what I was up to um, and then like interject or or every now and then we could do like a, oh, I wonder what Ross is up to like and you know jump over and and allow you to present things and get you to share your screen and say like oh I've been doing this and like this is where I want to and so it's it's a bit yeah I suppose like like you were or like we were saying yesterday when we were chatting about it um, it's like a, a telethon <laughs> it's like let's check in with South Liverpool and we'll go to Ross and see how things are going down there um, um, but you maybe the be <clears throat> I suppose well yeah maybe at some point we'd have have somebody else doing some of the kind of driving OBS um, and and managing the stream and things behind the scenes rather than rather than me doing it badly live or maybe I'll just build a whole load of little kind of Arduino -y gadgets or something or get a better setup yeah there's there's definitely a whole bunch of things we could do there's, presumably there'd be some way of finding out how many people are watching it live that doesn't involve because I think basically there's like a studio thing in in YouTube which is where you kind of go live and stuff like that and, and manage it and you would I, I suppose do the streaming from if you weren't using something like OBS Studio uh, but you don't get as much flexibility over like placing different things on the screen in different places and and then be able to flip with different scenes to go to standby and all that kind of stuff um, but yeah, I that seemed to be that was like this is going to be another browser window that's probably going to be trying to show me some live video. <laughs> um, like so, having that running as well just felt like it was asking too much of of my laptop. <laughs> um, I guess um, so. That's why I haven't been running that. But that does give you like how many viewers there are and things like that and some stats and and what have you. So. So I'll go and have a look at that afterwards. Um, I mean, the thing that I was going to look at today, when I was thinking about it, um, he says, you know, because now now I'm two hours in, <laughs> like I should work out what I'm going to do for the last last hour. Um, so this issue, adding a tile set for land use is basically like if we look at um, the, the actual map like the the kind of general map tiles so not the isochrones like all the background stuff um, and all the roads and things like that uh, this is using the open cycle map tile set at the moment so that's one of the nice things about open street map is because it's just a an open data set you can um, uh, you can you know show the data in whatever way makes sense to you so like the default like Google Maps and things like that they're they're always they always end up being a kind of car centric view of the world where they're kind of going like well when you're looking at the whole country obviously like you want the motorways to be obvious because they're how you're going to get around the whole country uh, and then you know and then the A roads and, and things like that and when you're cycling motorways aren't very useful um, because you can't cycle down them so you're never going to use them for getting about 
um, and even some of the major A roads like aren't going to be great to cycle on. Uh, so, so what you can do with like, you don't get that kind of option with um, with Google Maps. I don't think um, of being able to look at it differently. You always get the car centric view. Um, whereas OpenStreetMap will let you do uh, um, other views. So the default OpenStreetMap tile set, yeah, is is a kind of more standard sort of a map. But then there's a different one which uses the same data and just decides to show it differently. So it like the motorways are still visible if I scroll out a bit. So yeah, you can still see the M57. Um, or you will do eventually when all of the I mean you can see this top bit of it there um, <clears throat> uh, but but it's not quite as obvious that it's there you know I mean it's you can see it it, it, it does exist uh, but it's not super in your face of like oh yeah this is a this is a route that you might want to go down on your bike because you can't go down on your bike uh, and instead you get things like this route here which looks like it goes down the motorway but doesn't actually go down the motorway. There's a bridleway that runs alongside the motorway, which actually I cycled down about this time last week. I was probably there, um, as it happens. Uh, and and so this is part of the national cycle network. So all of the red lines and then the 862, that's the national cycle network um, numbers. And this is the Trans Pennine Trail running down the loop line, which is like an old railway line. Um, which is Route 62 uh, on the National Cycle Network, and so you know, like you can't drive down there. That's a old railway. Um, you can't get a train down there either. There aren't any railway tracks. But uh, you can walk down it. You can cycle down it. You could uh, ride down it on a horse. Um, and so that's like that's much more visible because that's a good cycle route to go down. And so like the Google Maps is never going to show. The loop line as prominently as the open cycle map does um, and then all these blue lines are the kind of Liverpool um, councils cycle paths and cycle networks so a lot of these are on the road um, and they're just designated as a cycle path as well as um, as well as a road but at least you can kind of go okay there's you know like this route here M like that's I remember cycling that you get all the way from like from Walton down to Old Swan kind of around here um, oh yeah this is Old Swan here um, <clears throat> like and this is all kind of residential roads basically so that's quite a nice cycle route if you're well I mean even as a, an experienced cyclist because like it's nice not having to worry about the cars um, this one on the outside it's not quite as nice as I, I cycle this one quite a lot um, and it's a bit more kind of the, the the more major roads I suppose basically whereas these are more kind of residential roads that you can cycle down as well um, and so you end up with the being the traffic you know there's there's less traffic and the traffic that's on them is going more slowly um, like this one's yeah a bit more major cycle route wise but but yeah you can see so the cycle routes are more obvious and so what I was what I'd like to do with the 15 minute city stuff it's because it's not just about like oh let's do more cycling it's about thinking about your area differently um, and and if you're wanting your everyday needs within your so like if you're in West Derby for example um, and you want to know actually let me see if, uh, if I find the zoom to zoom into that a little bit Although it's then going to take forever to re-render things at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> um, is that actually recognised? I've clicked on that. Yeah, this may be the biggest problem. <laughs> like Adrian needs a better computer to do. Uh, oh, there we go. Zoomed in lots. Uh, so. Um, so you've got within the like so the West Derby, the centre of the village, as it's known by the locals, despite just being district of Liverpool. Um, but it's got quite a villagey feel when you get through that bit of, of town. Um, uh, <clears throat> St Mary's Church is in the centre here, um, and this is Croxteth Park. So 
you could be looking at it and kind of going, okay, well, this is the 15 minute isochrone for around there. And like, I know that most of this is kind of residential sort of stuff. Obviously you've got some nice green space because um, you've got Croctoth Park there. There are, like, there's a pub on the corner here, another pub over here. Um, and there are basically some like, you know, shops along, this is effectively the, the kind of high street of, um, of West Derby and, and I suppose up this up Mill Lane. Um, so you can kind of go, okay, there's some, there's some retail kind of around this bit in the center. Um, there's Holly Lodge School kind of up at the edge of it. Um, so that's where, well, I mean, it's only, only where the girls can go to school, but it's, you know, there is, there's a school, um, and it's thinking about some of the other stuff. You sort of go, okay, well, there's, there's sort of, you know, there's somewhere I can go and buy some gro groceries. There's somewhere I could live. There's somewhere I could go for a bit of exercise or to just, you know, get back to a bit of nature or something, some greenery. Um, there's some level of amenities, like, you know, there's a church there of some description. There's St. Mary's Church isn't showing up, which is in the center there. Um, there's a school, um, like I can't remember if West Derby's got a library or not, and if it has where it is, but you could, you know, be thinking about those sorts of different sorts of things. You know, there's not a lot in the way of office space, um, or that I can think of around West Derby. There's I mean, there's a tire place out on Almond's Green, which I suppose is out this way somewhere, I think. Um, and so you then kind of go, okay, well, where would I work? Um, that's within the 15 minutes um, and you'd maybe want to see whether there was some sort of office um, space uh, or there was some industrial like you know is there are there any factories or warehouses or like car mechanics places or those kind of things because you're trying to think about you know what what are the needs of the different sorts of people who would be living in any any particular 15 minute isochrone and so in order to try and get that um, sort of as something that you can kind of look at, because I mean, you know, I know West Derby not super well, but like I suppose well enough to do the describing that I've been doing just now. Um, but this map isn't showing any of the shops, um, and like it's not clear that all of these side. I mean, you can kind of make a guess that these sorts of roads look like they're probably residential roads but that's not necessarily the case um, so so what I think it would be nice would be to do a different set of map tiles that instead of as this one does you know it focuses on stuff that's kind of good for cyclists maybe we could do a road a tile set that was good for 15 minute cities um, and to my mind, that's one that kind of just shows in different colors. Like, you know, I mean, it probably, it wouldn't necessarily have to show you that there's woodland versus just um, kind of open grassed areas, which the park bit does here, but it maybe it would just show that all is kind of green because it's just like, there is some green space here. Um, and then it would show, um, like the school might be, I don't know what color you'd have for schools, but maybe that's purple or something, I don't, I don't know. And then the shops would be orange and the houses would be kind of brick colored or something. I, yeah, like, but pick a load of different colors and then just get the different areas draw. Because I suppose at the moment this residential, it probably is residential in the way that it's, or at least built up in the way that it's kind of gray because um, I imagine that if we get out into some other parts of um, of the city that aren't kind of built up areas, then I suppose they're either going to show up as mostly mostly green or maybe it'd be brown because it's going to be fields or something. I don't know. That's something we can go and find. I suppose actually if we scroll across, we get to see this sort of pinky sort of colour which is the industrial estate. So there is, there's some of this sort of coloring happening already where the areas that like that's Nosley industrial estate and then Kirby industrial estate, the other side. Um, and then you're out into the fields, um, as you get further out, uh, beyond the city. 
Um, but but there's no like obvious difference between. Um, I suppose the shops don't show up as as kind of obvious. An office, I don't know what office space would show up as, whether that's just going to be built up rather than industrial. But yeah, I don't know if you, you presumably you, you get the kind of idea of the sort of thing I'm talking about. Um, Ross, if you're still there. Yeah, I am here. Sorry. No, that's all right. Um, <clears throat> so. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, if you're if you're working out how to build it yourself, can you uh, can you make notes as you go? Uh, yeah, In you just have to make right. Okay. But then, yeah, do you need to do, like bundle install and then bundle? Like I guess yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm just thinking. Like, if you've gone through the steps of working out how to run it, um, like you, you'll have at least tripped over some of the things, and there may be other things that other people would be. But you know, you could make a, you could add a section to the readme.md um, that is like install or inst installation instructions, basically. And even if it's just on a level of install bundler. Oh, install Ruby, install Bundler, um, or maybe it's just install Bundler, I don't know. And then run, I think, do you just do bundle install and then bundle exec Jekyll serve or something like that? Um, so um, <clears throat> so that would then, yeah, let you, because you, then you're just going to make, yeah, you're going to move things forwards, <laughs> even if I haven't. Well, I think the readme is where it would go. I mean, yeah, like you, you could, you could, uh, you could create an issue that says like add some instructions on how to develop with it or whatever, uh, and then the installation instructions should live in the readme, um, and then when you committed that that ch those changes to the readme, you could close the issue, but. Like you know, it's a bit argue, arguable as whether that's make work or not. As to you know, you're gonna mostly gonna create an issue that goes go and do a thing, and then you'll immediately be like, yeah, I've done the thing and I've closed it. Um, so yeah, I mean, and I do do that as well. Um, like yesterday when I created an issue on the does Liverpool somebody should that was like we should get more safety glasses. And then I'm like, I've bought more safety glasses and they're here. <laughs> and these are the ones I got. Um, so the issues, or I mean, it's like, that one's not actually closed because I need to work out, we've got some kid sized safety glasses and I need to work out where we're gonna store them so they don't get confused for adult sized safety glasses. But, um, but yeah, like the issue's done and it was done before I started, before I opened the issue, I'd ordered the glasses and they'd turned up because uh, I was buying some for myself and just added some extras in uh, but it means that there's a, a like a list in, in the GitHub issues of where I got them from because that isn't obvious from anywhere else whereas like you know this is going to show up in the git log there'll be like the Dr. Robin Lovelace stuff that I added earlier um, like I wasn't you know there isn't an issue about that. There's no point opening an issue about that. It's just a minor little tweak um, that's really obvious when you're looking at the Git history as to what's happened. So, so yeah, it's up to you whether you create an issue or not. But I think the instructions should be in the readme.md. If I've, if, I've, if I've run out of time and have to go and make a sandwich, mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, pseudo make me a sandwich to jump into XKCD jokes. Uh, so yeah, so the stuff I'm looking at at the moment with with this website is um, basically how do we build our own tile 
set that makes it more obvious the different types of land use that are around so you can see uh, what's in the different bits of the um, 15 minute city or uh, 15 minute ice cream so to start that there's a slightly different tile set called cyclo SM uh, which is another cycling focused um, open street map uh, tile set um, and that one is also open source whereas I don't think the open cycle network set is open source it's one that one of um, I can't remember his name now gravity storm I think is his username on things but um, yeah the guy who did the open cycle map I don't think he's released that as open source or it wasn't obvious when I went looking for it and I found Cyclo SM instead and mostly I'm going to you know, hack around with it and make it different so it doesn't massively matter um, and so last time I was playing with this uh, which actually let me s um, yeah I'm showing my screen aren't I so um, so you can you can all all see what's going on um, I had a sudden fear that I was in the wrong scene in um, OBS <laughs> and that I'd be doing my usual talking lots about a website that nobody can see uh, so yeah issue 13 um, adding a tile set for land use is uh, uh, 13 days ago when I was last um, messing around with this stuff I started installing this so I yeah, found Cyclo SM uh, and they've got all the source code for how they build their tile sets um, and so I followed their install. And so mostly what I do when I'm yeah working on these things, especially the more complex stuff, where I don't really know what I'm doing, um, I'll make comments as I go of what I did, got up to. So hopefully, if anybody else wanted to spin up a version of the 15 Minute City website for their own, um, like their own area um, or what have you, you could go and and poke around in the closed issues um, and see some of the steps for like getting open trip planner up and running and things like that I was making notes as I went um, which I guess yeah is a bit different for me having just told you Ross to stick everything in the readme but I think yeah getting this code running in the readme is good I suppose the other thing you'd want to do if you were doing like this that's reliant on me having an open trip planner instance running uh, with data for Liverpool um, so if you were doing it for a different area you'd want you'd need to get a different open trip planner instance and yeah that's actually documented in an issue rather than an installation yeah maybe it should move into the readme for, uh, anyway um <clears throat> but yeah so i i installed the a uh, whole bunch of things like you have to download a load of the data the open stream up data and stick it into postgres database and then run some bits of code to like to generate a whole load of other things um, and install a bunch of bits of software that will basically you kind of write some Carto CSS I think it's called um, which isn't like it's not CSS in the kind of HTML and CSS style cascading style sheet sort of a thing but I think it's inspired by um, the uh, um, cascading style sheets sort of idea um, and that's how and then you you so you write a load of rules for how the map should be rendered and then you run some software um, on the data set that you've downloaded with the rules that you've set and that generates a bunch of tiles um, and so I've downloaded the data for uh, I think I got a slightly bigger area when I was doing that. Yeah, so I pulled down Merseyside and Cheshire and Lancashire and Greater Manchester. Although I have a feeling that it ran out of memory when I was trying to run it with all of those things on the server that I'm doing it on. So I ended up just limiting the tiles. Uh, and mostly I need to kind of half read through this myself to remind myself where I got up to, which is the other reason why I write these comments is so that when I come back to it in like you know two weeks after I last touched it, I can be like, what the hell was I doing? Where did I get to? How do I go and pick this up again and, and carry on with it a bit further? Um, and 
Right, okay, so this Cosmtic, uh, if that's how you pronounce it, God knows how you pronounce it, uh, which generates the files, I think. Um, let me see. Yeah, so, I, so that, that was where I got up to last time I was playing around with it, was I had a new a tile server which would generate all of the map tiles for the cyclosm stuff from um, from from kind of raw from the source data. So I suppose in a, a bit like building software from code from source code and getting a thing rather than just downloading what already exists. I have now done building map tiles from from source. Um, from the source data, I suppose, and, and style sheets, rather than just getting some that somebody else has built for me. Um, which, yeah, maybe I should work out how the how the hell I was doing that. So let me just go and find my uh, uh, yeah terminal. And if I remember rightly, I was doing all of this on the. Minute City uh, server rather than on my local machine. Yep, so I've got this Cyclo, Cyclo SM Carto CSS style uh, repository. So that's got a whole load of things in it, um, and you can see that there's some PBF files, which is the OpenStreetMap data for, yes, yeah, so that's the one for Greater Manchester. Uh, and that's one for Lancashire, and the one for Merseyside is here. Um, and at some point, like uh, I guess, yeah, with the improved deployment system, we should also probably get the tiles to get updated every now and then, or you know, to get the for the data to get pulled down every now and then. So at the moment, this is, you know, the OpenStreetMap data from a couple of weeks ago. Um, so it won't have the very latest changes. Like it's probably not a big deal because I doubt the map will change that much that quickly. But if we start going and adding adding more stuff to the OpenStreetMap data, like yeah, you know, if once we've got this, we're then like, oh, well, actually, it doesn't show the big factory at such and such place, and we can go in and edit OpenStreetMap to add the big factory at such and such place. Uh, but then we need to download the data again and regenerate the map tiles for it to show up in our map tiles. Um, like that happens automatically for OpenStreetMap and stuff, so you can add new features and then it shows up within like a few hours or something or maybe even faster these days i can't remember now um so uh let me stop serving the website as well and also just get another session um on the server Oops. There. Ah. Typo in my stupidly weird terminal. Um, so, cyclosm. Right. And. So, I think in this issue I made a note that yes, I can run this. Weird version of Cosm or Cosmtic thing. Uh, so this, hopefully, this file, this command. If I let's see, have I got yeah? Project.mml was in this folder, and I've got Project.mml in this folder, so it must be in here that I run it. And I do that, and it falls over in a heap. Damn. <laughs> Ah, do I need to do some kind of? There was a node. The yeah, NVM is this node manager y thing, isn't it? Um, so, did I make a note? No, I did not make a note of. Oh, actually, yeah, there's NVM install there. Hmm, yeah, let me just have a look in the history and see what. Um, See what I was doing last time I was in here. 
that case, it didn't be him help when it's not to me. Yeah, I think basically, like, when I last played around with this, I had loads of problems with, um, with getting the right version of like this this software requires a specific version of node and node package manager and stuff and so I ended up with NVM which is like a node virtual node environment manager or something like that I don't know what it stands for but um, it, it manages different versions of um, of NVM uh, and so I Probably run if this will let me see. Like I suppose uh, what I'm hoping to do is find out which version or whether I need to do something to get the local version. I don't use MVM very much. Display the currently activated version of Node. Okay, so let's see if that let's see if I've got one of them. MVM current eight point nine point one. Yeah, so I think maybe that's that's maybe where it's going wrong. So if I look at the history and get rid of anything that isn't MVM related, you will see that what I had been doing was probably this MVM install 6.17.1. So I think maybe if I move back to using that one, it's already installed, that's good now using this, so now if I do MVM current it's 6.17.1 and so is this going to work if I run that yes, there we go, this looks much more promising so I can't remember how long this takes now but this is generating this is generating a whole load of map tiles and it's going to run a server on the 50 minute city server which reminds me I think I had some um, I think it only does it for local hosts so whilst that's building thing oh it's building it has built stuff um, so this is not going to work because it's looking on localhost and it's not on localhost it's on 15 minute city mcfm.com at port 6789 this is probably also not going to work yes that did not work because it's the um, <clears throat> like it's not allowing just anybody to connect to it it's expecting you to be running the web browser on the same machine that the map tiles are being generated on and they're not this is I'm generating this on a server in the cloud um, and it's a digital ocean droplet or something I think if I remember rightly um, and so what I can do to kind of sneakily get around this is when I'm SSHing into it I can do some port forwarding and what port was it it's port 6789 and so I can get port 6789 and then on the far end like when I'm SSHed in that will connect so this is going to open port 6789 on my local machine um, uh, as a kind of listening port. Um, uh, ports being a like a yeah place where web servers can live for and loads of other stuff as well. But for this example, it's web server. We're going to connect to it, uh, which is the bit if you ever see a weird like after this bit where I'm going like there's a name of the machine and then colon and then a number. This number is the port number. Um, that it's going to connect to, so you can see that the Jekyll was running at port 4000 and 127001 is localhost, which is like the machine you're running on, um, wherever you happen to be. Um, and localhost is a synonym for that. So when we were a minute ago, we were at localhost 6789. So this is trying to connect to a web server running at 6789 on my machine, and there isn't one, which is why I kept unable to connect. Uh, but there is a web server running at 6789 on the server that I'm doing this development on uh, and so what I can do here is when I'm this is me SSHing so I'm going to get a terminal session in the um, a secure shell is what SSH is um, in uh, on the development server um, 
and because I can't just connect to that server at port 6789 because it doesn't let just anybody, it only lets people on the local machine do it. So I'm going to pretend that I'm on the local machine, well, I suppose I can sort of I'm on the local machine, but uh, yeah, I'm creating an SSH tunnel, this is called. So this is going to be um, port 6789 on my local machine. When I When something connects to that, it's then going to connect to the far end of this SSH connection, so the development server, is going to connect to localhost 6789 on that machine instead. So I'm going to do that, which will log in. So now I'm on the development server. Uh, and if I reload this, magically, boom, there we go. We have a um, map tile. Um, viewer or whatever for want of a better um, it's still loading lots um, so we can see what yeah there's there's a whole load of you know output happening from the um, <clears throat> from the uh, yeah map tile generator thing uh, which is yeah you know complaining about some font related stuff which I think it did last time isn't really a problem uh, and maybe eventually we'll get some tiles and so this is going to be like you know two and a half hours in I've got back to where I was two weeks ago <laughs> uh, but actually whilst it's doing that I'm going to make some notes here just to say that I needed to do yeah let's get this running again to following. so I'm just gonna make some notes so that next time I'm doing stuff with this there's you know it's easy to get back to to where I was um, Um, and what do I do? Uh, CD cycle actually. Yeah, let me CD that, and then I need to do um, running MVM to get the right version of MVM. Um, so I'm just cut and paste. Folder that was in. So I'm doing this while I'm SSH into the uh, fifteen minute city server. Plus, I needed to create an SSH tunnel to port six seven eight nine on localhost to be able to access access the server. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me just find the command uh, I was I ran, and it was yep this one. So so that should give me the notes that I need so that I can get the map tiles up and running again. Let me see if this has managed to find. Yep, there we go. And actually, yes, you can see we have started at zero, zero. Uh, so the center of this map is Null Island, uh, or the bit on the equator just off the west coast of Africa. And yeah, you don't get to see very much because I don't have the OpenStreetMap data for Africa. I think I did download a shape file for the whole world so that I would at least be able to see 
when I zoomed out far enough, like where I was in the world, to be able to go and find. Yeah, and you can maybe just about make out some tiny um, differences of in the kind of in the northwest. So I, I've obviously got the Lancashire and Greater Manchester um, side of things, and as we zoom in, you can see that actually we've got some map tiles as well as just the shape outlines um, for some bits of the northwest. Um, and that should just get better. So this is what the cycle OSM uh, managed to put it away. Um, and then just yeah, this is all very very slow um, I think it was generally faster than this when I wasn't <coughs> asking my computer to do quite so much work um, are you still with us Ross? So yeah, I'm just <clears throat> slowly getting into to doing some stuff. And now I suppose the the thing with this, uh, this is like I you know I can build look I can build map tiles. Uh, so now I can change map tiles. And in order to do that, I need to know what the hell I'm doing, um, which is going to get interesting. Um, I suppose actually at the moment um, yeah maybe what I should be doing um, I guess yeah today given there's not a huge amount of time left um, I might just do a bit of experimenting and seeing if I can change some of the map tiles to make something a different colour or something like that um, and and then what we probably need to do um, is actually get a new uh, to fork the repository um, because at the moment the one in the, that I've got here this um, cycle OSM Carto CSS style like this has got all of the stuff to build um, uh, the cycle OSM stuff and it's a, it's a clone of like I basically, it's, it's the yeah, it's pointing at the Cycle OSM repository and GitHub. So um, if I don't know what's like, there will be a whole bunch of stuff that's changed, I suppose, because there'll be yeah. So the project MML I've changed, and then there's a bunch of files that are new and don't exist in the normal repository because there's things like the yeah OpenStreetMap data that are downloaded and stuff like that. Uh, I don't, know what, I don't know what the difference is. Let's, let's see what I changed to project.mml. Um, what did I change? Um, oh, okay. It turns out I needed to change the names of the polygons slightly to get the land polygons to turn up. Um, so, yeah, so I've made a slight change. But obviously, these changes, I don't want to push them back to the. Um, uh, cycle OSM repository. I mean, one, I won't be able to because I'm not a contributor on that, um, so I doubt I'll have permissions to do that. Um, but two, they, especially once I start making more changes um, and changing like the land types and colours and things and, and making it less cycling focused, they are not going to care <laughs> about um, about all of my changes. Um, so so what I should do is I should run through these steps again that I've taken to get this sort of stuff up. I might need to run through too much of them because I can probably point, it's all going to be pointed at the same data set and things. Um, but I should, yeah, get my own repository. In fact, 
yeah let's well let's yeah I'll, I'll work out if, it, if this is going to work first before I go to the trouble of forking the repository and building up a new a new one instead um, <clears throat> but but basically I like yeah this this is so these are what the, the map tiles look like um, and I think and yeah I, I <clears throat> I'm now kind of you know flying pretty much as blind as anybody else is uh, I, I think all of these M MSS files and maybe the YMLs and stuff are are the ones that are interesting. So, I mean, what have we got that's MSS? Like, I don't know, it just looks to me like these are probably, like, one, the MSS is probably, like, kind of map style sheets. Like, instead of CSS, the cascading style sheets you'd have for websites. Um... And and they've got names that look like that look familiar. So let's just have a look at changing roads. Roads. Mss. Roads. Mss. So um, I haven't ever <clears throat> played around with this before, but um, you know, luckily I assume the double slash is a comment like it is in C plus uh, plus. And various other things, um, and and presume. I mean, yeah. At some point, I am going to have to go and and read up about what this style sheet stuff is. But but I'm just, you know, the first step is we can just do a bit of playing around and see what happens. Um, and you know, a lot of these. So these Zoom things presumably are um, like what Zoom level on the map you are. So if we look at the map we can see like zoom level one like usually it shows up in the um, in the URL on things you get to see that and um, open stream up quite a lot um, like so this is yeah the zoom level and then this is the yeah, let me not drag that around drag that around <laughs> yeah so uh, this is the zoom level this hash 14 and then this bit is the lat long for the center point of the map. Um, so this will update as I drag it around. Yeah, when I go of it, it's gone to 53.422 now. Um, and then in this particular Cosmetic, I, I don't know my way around this very much. So I don't know what we can do. Um, and like, what can I inspect? So I can, yeah, okay, so I can turn different bits of it on and off by the looks of it um, so if I turn that off turn okay I've only got show all um, uh, maybe I need to turn the data inspector on probably don't want to do that it's probably going to take ages to do stuff let's show tunnels and we'll show just tunnels and that should hopefully right there we go Cool. So there's a whole bunch of tunnels, and obviously there's a few under the river. Um, that is the um, Wirral Loop of um, the railway. So there's a yeah, like that doesn't show up on the. I turn the data inspector off. Like yeah, you don't get to see the Wirral Loop that runs. So the um, actually it's not showing the railway tunnel at all on this um, style sheet. Because there's the railway tunnel goes from like Hamilton Square to James Street, um, and then the Wirral Loop goes through Moorfield Station, Liverpool, Lime Street, Central, back to James Street, and then back under the water. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, like this, the map isn't showing that at all, but the data. Um, does have uh, when it eventually reloads yeah does have the con the, the information about where the railway line goes um, god knows what all of those little tunnels are they the Williamson tunnels or something like 
yeah, it's just like, so mostly I think what I'm going to do for the rest of the live coding session is just poke around with OpenStreetMap data. <laughs> uh, so, okay, this is probably going to be like, what, I, what I'd been thinking of doing was like, oh, I can go and just hack around with this, the MSS files and see, see if we can make the map look different. Um, and maybe I should still do that, but um, but this is kind of interesting as a way. I, I suppose this is what this tool is for, is to let you kind of pull out various bits of the um, of the data, so you can kind of go, oh, actually, yeah, we should show the tunnels. Like I don't think we really should, but um, especially not the yeah the railway tunnels because you know, they're not that you are yeah the tunnels in general aren't going to be very useful for. Um, for seeing what the different land uses are, like they might, be, it might be worth showing the the ones under the river for the railways and, and the uh, cars, just so that you can kind of orient where you are. But it's not useful to show the where the loop line goes. But it's kind of new, neat that you can get that data to then go and look in and things. Um, what other things can we do? Uh, Sorry, thank you. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting. You sh Yeah, but you should be able to generate a pull request as well as, um, as well as Dependabot. I I'd have thought. Um, let's. I don't know. Let's. Does it? Hmm. Let me let me just uh, comment on that. So that I've got that note made, uh, and then go back and yeah, because you're allowed to have more than one pull. So um, actually, <clears throat> let's let's do that. Let's do this. Let's get advanced with this shit. Let's, let me work out how I turn you, how I make you a presenter, and then you can present, um, and then we can see what you're up to, and then we can walk through and and try and solve the problem. So, so I've stopped screen sharing now. I assume you've seen, which means that you should be able to start screen sharing. Oh, yeah. Which is cool because this means that, like, um, we can. Well, one, you'll have moved the project forwards, <laughs> whereas all I've done is poked around a bit with the map tile and gone, ooh, it's cool. Oh, I can see your screen. Uh, and two, we can, um, yeah, we'll have shown the power of, like, collaborative live coding or something, which I'm sure somebody else is already actually doing. But um, nice. Okay. I see, but you've... you've um, is it? Uh, is this your fork of it, or is this? Uh, no. Okay. No, no, that's fine. So, the I think the reason you can't create a pull request is because, like, if you quit from that for a second, or yeah, or just get back to a, a you know, t a terminal command prompt. Um, sorry, I was meaning. So, if you do um, git branch, git space branch. Um, and then return. Just you know, just hit enter. Let me just make that a bit bigger so that other people might be able to. Well, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Um, how can you do what? Oh no, I've made. Sorry, I was. I was saying that I'll make it. I've I've made it bigger on my screen because it's my screen that's getting captured and sent to the um, internet. So. Um, yeah, like I have a feeling that the chat window might be obscuring a bit of it, but um, but but hey, let's not worry too much about it at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so you're on the master branch. So um, the reason you can't do a pull request is because you haven't, like, it's not on a separate branch. Um, so you'd need to have created a separate branch, and then you could do a pull request of that branch. 
but that doesn't matter because all you need to do is like uh, you know and especially because this is like it, uh, it's not exactly a throwaway project but it's not a super production critical like we need to do branching for all the changes and so on and so forth and I'm I suppose I'm just developing on master rather than developing on branches and doing um, um, doing a pull request to pull them in so um, yeah don't worry about your branch I was just that was to see what branch you were on and just to double check that you were on the master branch um, and then git status says that you've got your like one commit ahead I think doesn't it if you do git status Uh, and so all you need to do is do git push. Ah, okay. Ah, right. Okay, so that's right. Well, we can, but we can solve that. Um, and uh, what do I? Ah, you see, the yeah, exactly. I need to adjust the project. I'm just. You can't see my. Let me just double check before I start typing in passwords. Uh, <laughs> but yeah okay I can see your screen you can't see my screen or you know like it's it's yeah it's sharing what area of your yeah it's sharing that window I suppose is the bit that's going live uh, so what I can do is I can go back into are you not part of the Liverpool UK um, uh, organisation um And it might be that I need to go, oh yeah, you are, aren't you? So, hmm, so you are listed as a, um, as a member. So let me see what, um, hmm, okay, let me just, yeah, like I think mostly I just need to work out to give you, um, so you can be an owner or a member. Ba, 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 ba. Right, okay. So maybe I just need to give you access to that repository then. Um, let me go into the repository and settings, I assume. Um, uh, manage access. Uh, no, I do not want to save that to Pinboard. Click on the correct button this time. Okay, so. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because it, it says all 19 members can access this repository with right access or something. So, okay. Oh, that's fine. Well, what have you done then? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> cool. So presumably I can go and look at the 50 Minute City one and scroll down and there is a getting started section. Boom. Very nice. Cool. Um, yeah. Should I? Well, should I go back to playing around with um, data and sh sharing that? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm trying to work. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, that's no, that's, that's absolutely fine. And actually, I'll probably switch back to my uh, different uh, scene then, um, in order to, and then I won't need to worry about sharing my screen on. Um, on big blue button because you're not going to be here so that's yeah that's cool uh, let me see, see if I can get onto my local website downstairs mm -hmm. yeah yeah cool so is that working yeah 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 that's fine right smart 
Cool. Well, yeah, thanks for thanks for joining in. Thanks for doing some actual work on it, which is more than I will have achieved by, <laughs> by the end of the session. But um, yeah, um, and Jackal is kind of like cool for for those sorts of things. I I do really. I mean, I like it partly because it's Ruby and I can then hack around with it. But um, like, there's a little tiny Ruby script which I didn't. Um, yeah, didn't didn't talk anybody through, um, which does generate like basically it, it iterates through all those data files and makes a call to the Open Trip Planner website to say, or the API of the Open Trip Planner instance to say generate the isochrome for like this center point, um, and then it's saved. You know, and then that that will get given a geo the geo JSON file, and then it saves that in a um, like on the on the web server as it were so you end up like if you um like now that you've got your stuff up and running ross you you'll have a um you'll have a site um uh underscore site folder which is like the built site and in there there'll be i can't remember exactly where they are now but Thing. there might be an isochrones folder or something um, which is then uh, and then inside there are a load of geojson files and so they were all generated like there's a bit of code in actually let me go and find the um, 15 minute city repository um, I think that's in underscore plugins um, yeah there's a generate isochrones.rb uh, which is the Ruby file that goes and basically when the site's getting generated it works out if there's an isochrone data set and iterates through all of those and you can see there's the bit where it puts out the um, uh, skipping Null Island stuff which actually will be okay if you're in London because it checks to see if both the lat and the long are zero before it skips it um, and then it prints out like you know, which area it's doing and then there are some extra little bits that it does a loop for the reduced mobility, the walking, the bicycle um, and then for each one of those transport types for each area um, it generates a URL which the ISO URL is the kind of the open trip planner API call effectively uh, and then it yeah opens that reads the data out down, uh, saves it into a file. So that builds up, yeah, basically builds up a load of isochrome files and then the index.markdown has some stuff in there that will, when it, um, uh, where's the index.markdown gone to? So there's, uh, let me look at this raw rather than the stuff uh, we should um, probably at the bottom yeah there's a whole load of JavaScript at the bottom and one of the things that it does is it will like when the page loads it has a, an array of areas and yeah there's a, a bit at the bottom that says load the isochrones um, and that just iterates through all of the areas that it knows about and um, generates uh, well, you know, pulls in each of those files that got generated earlier, so it like downloads them from the Jekyll website that you've built, um, and then leaflet.js is what draws them on the map. Um, so, so yeah, that's what, that's how that stuff works. Um, and I suppose actually. We're kind of now at five to four, and it feels like that might be a rather than me spend five minutes just kind of going, "Oh, cyclosm, you can do poking around with stuff," which you can do poking around with stuff, and it's kind of interesting. But um, it feels like that's a suitable point at which to go, like call to call it a day, um, given that like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, and it's interesting the trip stop because trips.mcqn.com no well like I I can't remember if that I think that still exists because that's what I called the server initially and then I decided that it wasn't really about trips um, like it was when I was running open trip planner uh, but mostly it was about 15 minute cities so but I think I just created another um, C name in the DNS stuff so that you could use either of those I would have thought but Have you, you? Are you still running Jekyll? Yeah, but now I'm going to try to run Jekyll. Mm hmm. So, please turn it to trace to the server. Oh, okay, because it's crashing at some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could do, yeah. Ah, I think the problem, I think the problem is that the Open Trip Planner instance has crashed. <laughs> um. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think if you, um, I don't know if it's quite finished yet, but um, basically I've just gone in and, ah uh, no, it has, well I did restart it and then it has crashed again. Uh, so I th I think what has happened, um, and let me let me stop running Mapnik, um, uh, which is then going to cause a whole load of stuff to complain at me. Let me quit that for a second. So I think the problem is that the development server isn't really beefy enough to cope with um, to cope with both running Open Trip Planner and running um, Cosmetic that's doing the um, other stuff, and and I could. I could up the amount of memory on it and stuff, but it would cost me more to run. Um, and um, yeah, uh, so so I think in a moment. Well, let's see if it let's see if it manages to get up and running. I'm, I've just I've restarted Open Trip Planner and I've killed off Cosmetic for now because I'm not going to do anything more with it, having given that we're at the end. Uh, so I think it's running. Now, oh no, actually, building street graph from OpenStreetMap, so I think it's maybe still building. Um, that's cool, yeah, thanks for joining. Um, and for you. Uh-huh. Okay, that's good. Um, you don't know if get to yeah, I guess not. It's and um, it's it was reasonably in Yeah. I suppose it's useful to know that I can I can just like ramble on about things and and explain the project, I suppose, because that mostly what I was, yeah, thinking was there could be people like yourself and who who knows who else, um, they'd be like tuning in, and so I need to do a bit of scene setting and explaining where things are. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah. 
because you've actually thought about what you might want to say and tried to work out a yeah, through, through it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and and the, yeah, I think that's been also a ni an interesting thing to ex you know explore and work out OBS Studio and things because that could just be a way of doing make and I or general talks about stuff. Um, you might want to have you just re you've just restarted, haven't you? Yeah, it's, yeah that's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I know, I can see. <laughs> uh, so, in the terminal window, there's just been loads of. <laughs> but Null Island is an in Sefton Park. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the other thing you could do is help out with issue four, I think, is it? That is, you know, find all of the um, all of the center points. Because I don't know whether there's all the center. Actually, yeah, I guess it's Sefton, Sefton Park's probably one near you. I don't know where. Where's the center of Sefton Park? As a general area. Right. And that's kind of interesting because Steve's chippy, like, because to my mind, that's quite, that's why, I mean, it's very close to Sefton Park, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's like, yeah. The sons are fairly, Sefton Park, probably the same as Steve's chippy. Hmm. I mean, I was wondering whether, alternatively, Sefton Park might be like Lark Lane. Because that feels like it's a centre of stuff around, especially because um, St Michael's isn't a um, an area. I mean, it could be an area. Like we could add something. You know, maybe that would be a thing to do. Would be to to change the Sefton Part One to be St Michael's, or uh, then I'd need to work out where the centre of St Michael's is. Uh, but, but maybe we should make the Sefton Part One be Lark Lane because that feels like it's a a centre of a neighbourhood that people talk about lots, isn't it? But but then where on Lark Lane? <laughs> um, I suppose would it need to be um, Keith's on Lark Lane or something to be the centre? Yeah, no, that's all right. And I'm sort of, you know, mindful of I'm thinking about the fact that actually, and now we're at five past four, so we've, you know, perfectly, um, yeah. it's, it's, you know, just just ticked over the hour and probably to about the point where I managed to work out where the live streaming was and start streaming properly or start doing something. So, uh, so yeah, maybe we should just call it a day then. So. No, thanks. Thank you. Um, and and then I'll yeah work out when next to do something like this. Maybe not as long. Maybe uh, yeah. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's been good. Cool. Right. Well, I shall uh, switch to the standby thing and then stop streaming. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, Ross. And uh, thanks for watching. Anybody who has been watching. Um, and uh, yeah, take care.